Hey there, hi there, everybody. Hello. Hello, hello. There's that downfall. Welcome. Welcome to another Spire Community Day. Our semi-regular form of thanking everybody for their collective stream support, which has been, in recent times, downright exceptional. We overflowed the sub bar a couple of times in the wake of our uh, 20 streak inspire. And the sub count of the stream has never been higher than it currently stands. Let, let not the counter deceive you. The, that's not the total number of subs, just the subs since we last reset it. In short, the channel's doing incredible thanks to the many, 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 many folks who choose to support the stream, whether it be through large supplies of gifted sub bombs or with a simple steady tier one or prime recurring sub. Both of them are helping the channel massively and helping me do what I do full time with uh, no fear that things will change. I want to continue to be here doing what I do 10 years from now. That's my goal here on Twitch, to make something long-term. And I've got faith that that can be a reality. And as Mata says, I think breaking the world record was very beneficial to my stream. I should do it more often. You know, I don't disagree. At the very minimum, I, I, I always strive to continue to improve at Slay the Spire, and so I always want to uh, beat my own records, my own personal best. So we can look forward to beating some of those at the very minimum. Crip Rat Daddy says, how do gifted subs work? You purchase um, gifted subscriptions through Twitch. You can either choose a specific recipient or have Twitch give them out at random if you're purchasing multiple at the same time. But essentially, you, you buy somebody else a one month of subscription to the channel. They get all the benefits of being subscribed, a chat badge, um, emotes, and ad-free viewing, as well as more channel points and oh, there's more benefits to su subscribing than I can keep track of, I think, at this point. A whole bunch of little side benefits, but the main ones are ad-free viewing, chat badge, and access to the emotes. Work around. Let's see here. Oh, I see what's happening. So, putting theory into practice, M. Saini, thank you so much for the M. Sane gift of 10 gifted subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club, everybody. Odd Constant, thanks for the five gifted subs. Welcome, welcome. No C, thanks for two months in the Prime sub. He Who Watches says, can you gift your Prime? No. No, you have to manually use your Prime subscription to have your account subscribed to uh, a channel that you're not currently subscribed to. So you can actually be put in a weird position of not being able to use your Prime sub on a channel because you got gifted a sub. In which case, you have to either use the Prime sub on a different channel or you have to waste your Prime sub for that month. Those are the two options. Kind of weird that that can happen, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that can. How's it going, Deltnix, Prankster, Pika, Atlas WW getting in there with the hype bits. Thank you so much for the 100 bits. So, make sure we're playing on a, a different account. So, the theme of our Slay the Spire Community Days is usually modded, 
often requested sort of off the beat content, usually involving community engagement of some fashion. What I want to start out with today is a good old fashioned run with the Hermit, the added base character in the Slay the Spire Downfall mod, and I think one of the most uh, most well balanced and most beautifully done modded characters that there are for Slay the Spire. I'll do one, maybe two Hermit runs, depending on how we feel or d depending on whether we win on Ascension 20, and then I want to. Um, since we're doing speedy runs this month, I want to continue the trend with some multiplayer speedy runs. We'll be doing the Spire with Friends mod in the versus mode so that we can have many people participating on the same, the same seed, um, and see who can race to the end the quickest. So I'm also going to be playing with the Morneow Starting Bonuses mod created by UniquelyK here in chat. And um, with a recent update based on my suggestion, we now have Meow Bonuses. I want Shop Relic too. Um, let's keep these off so there's a higher chance of seeing the new stuff. Um, we have new starting bonuses that... Uh, provide potion slots based on my own suggestions. So you can get um, one or potentially two more potion slots from Niao with potions to go in them to start your run. And uh, part of the reason I like this is because it shows off that Slay the Spire can handle more than the maximum usual number of potion slots. So if you get the potion slot starting bonus and potion belt, you can end up with six or seven potion slots which the game can, can display completely normally. So, we're going to be playing the Hermit here on Ascension 20. Bets are open. Will the Hermit defeat the Corrupt Heart at the end of the Spire? I get to sort of sit back and relax a, a little bit. I'm not planning on doing this run particularly... particularly quickly. Hmm. I think this was another change to Morneau. You get informed of what relics are if you're going to gamble for a relic, although not the boss relic, interestingly. So, our options are remove a card, 100 gold, obtain a curse, and mummified hand, which could be the start of a very powerful curse deck on the Hermit, actually. Or lose your starting relic and obtain a random boss relic. The, notably, the Hermit's starting relic is called the Old Locket. It gives you a memento, a curse card that retains, applying one vulnerable to everyone. So it's a, a rather useful damage multiplier in the early game. One turn of Vuln holds up pretty well late game, too. It does apply to you as well. And notably, it doesn't exhaust when you play it. So if you play the memento, you will draw it again. Our curse is good for the shooter, yes. So one of the major one of the major synergies on this character relates to curses. Uh, in particular, there are a lot of powers available to this character that interact with curses, either giving you a block for curse drawn or generating more curses or allowing you to exhaust your curses for some kind of benefit. There's a lot of reasons to want curses on this hermit character. So I think a, a Curse and Mummified Hand could actually be a, a rather, rather interesting way to get started here. Got Hexaghost at the end of the act. That's not too worrisome. Mr. King says, love the idea of curse decks. One aspect of Spire that I feel wasn't quite as in-depth are the curse cards. And I agree with that. There's there's a couple relics in Spire 
that interact with curses, but they tend to be some of the worst relics in the game because the curses aren't frequent enough uh, to be good for you to... For, for the relics to be reliably doing anything at all, quite frankly. So, for example, Omomori can block two curses, which can be very useful, but sometimes you get to the end of the run. We've, we've had runs that started with Omomori on floor one, and then we got to the end of the run, beat the heart, and Omomori still has two charges because we never saw any time along the way where a curse was even offered once to us for any reason. And that's because Spire has no guaranteed curses anywhere. It'd be interesting if you could do things like take a curse at the end of a boss fight to get an extra rare relic or something. Or if there was a way to... to trade curses more reliably, like a room type that interacted with the curses you could see on the map. And you could just plot to the curse room to get curses. I think that's also something Inspire that could have could have been explored on a little bit more. The, the map is broken down into unknown, merchant, treasure, rest, enemy, elite. Six different room types. That's it. And there's very, very significant variation in what each of these contain, right? A treasure room is very different from a rest room is very different from an enemy room in what they provide. But I think there's a lot of room for, for more than this six. Anyway, let's try it. Let's see if we can force a curse deck. I think having a mummified hand is going to make that a lot more viable. But we're going to need to get our hands on some powers. What curse do we get? We got a shame. Okay, that's not too bad. Note that uh, in our starting deck is this card, Covet. Discard one card, draw one card. Not d draw one, discard one. Discard one, then draw one. If you discard a curse with this card, the curse is exhausted. So we can actually permanently destroy the Covet if we want to. I'm going to go to this through this shop. We may not... Um, we're probably not going to remove the curse. What I'm looking to do is buy a power. Because there's always a power for sale in a store. I want to do that. Another core mechanic to the Hermit is called Dead On. Dead On activates if the card is in the middle of your hand. And if you have an even number of cards in your hand, either middle card works. So with six cards in hand, the cards in three and four will activate their Dead On effects. You can manipulate whether a card is in the middle of your hand or not by playing other cards or by discarding cards or by drawing cards, all of which the Hermit can do. So it's kind of cool there. So currently we're... Let's see, 11 plus 9 is um, 20. So three strikes won't kill this one. So I do need to uh, give him the blip lap, so to speak. Bang. Take 9. Better than taking 13 or whatever we're about to take there. Get out of here, shame. I feel no shame. I slay the relic cease to function properly. It might for the duration of our uh, of our downfall experience here. It might. Get an early explosive potion, which is pretty good. And three common attacks. Ooh, I might be taking quick draw. Misfire says, deal 13 to a random enemy and put a clumsy curse into your draw pile. Oof, it's like a wild strike, but it's randomly targeted for the same damage as wild strike. I don't think I like that card very much. Pistol Whip, six damage and three bruise. Bruise targets take more attack damage by a flat amount rather than by a percentage amount. So three bruise means three more attack damage taken. Pretty good card. Wears off at the end of the turn though. Or quick draw. Deal 9, draw 2 for 1. However, next turn, draw 1 less card. And upgrades to deal 11, draw 3. Next turn, draw less is pretty gnarly, but I'm going to take the front load. This is front load the card. We're going to give it a try. And there is a power relating to curses. It's exactly what I was looking for. This particular one is exceedingly strong. 
Shadow Cloak says, whenever you draw a curse, gain six block. Pretty hard to say no to that. That's what we came here for. What is this relic here? The Spyglass. If you end your turn concentrated, gain an additional energy next turn. That's right. Concentrated is a status effect the Hermit can gain. I'll be buying that. Anything else that we can afford here? Not at all. Not even the on sale short fuse. Pretty cool card. 18 damage, costs one less per striker defend played this turn. So you just draw it with a starter hand, and it's actually really good. <laughs> Downfall is a community mod made for Slay the Spire. I think the devs have given it a shout out before, but it's definitely a mod. Oh, man. And we get the curse event, too. So we're going full curse build here. Like, from floor one. This is perfect. This area of the spire appears to be a graveyard. You carefully continue through when a strange, faint apparition stops you. It reaches out with both hands, apparently offering some sort of deal. You can tell the apparition is holding some sort of precious relic in each palm, but you can't make out what they are. Surely a harsh price is being asked in exchange. If we open the left box, we obtain either a Duvu doll or a Darkstone Puriapt, and then we're cursed twice with Haunted. An ethereal, unplayable card. When drawn, add ethereal to all cards in your hand, meaning all of the cards in our hand will exhaust if we don't play them. That can actually be a good thing, because it can add ethereal to stuff like wounds or burns, um, or strikes or defends that you don't want, but it can also add ethereal to really important things like apparition plus, or your wraith form, or your, your what have you. But it can actually benefit us. Ultimately, all that exhausts, so we had, would have no curses. We'll have to get some curse generation. We open the right box. We get either a cursed key or a calling bell. It's extra cursed, meaning... I think if we get more curses than normal... Or we can chase away getting a blue candle so that we can exhaust curses ourselves. Is the ethereal permanent for when the next time the card is drawn? Yes, which makes it extra scary. Permanent for the whole fight. Oh, blue candle memento. That's right, right? The blue candle causes you to take one damage when you play memento. Bummer. Do you get to choose which? I don't believe so. I think I'm more tempted by the left box. I want the I want the per curse benefit starting right now. Also, I, I would really like a Duvu doll. We'd be so strong with a Duvu doll. Ah, we get the Periapt. Oh, that's right, and we can get more stuff from here. As soon as you class the artifact from the figure, darkness envelops the room. The specter speaks to you once more, his words appearing in your head without you ever hearing them. A wise choice. What do you say to another deal, friend? Take as many as you like. Random rare card, 5 max HP or 100 gold souls. Yes, the order, order was beneficial and I knew it would be. So we got 12 max HP there. And I'm going to take one random rare card. Yeah, we can take as many as we want. Gambit. I don't want to take that many, though. Put two random attacks from your discard pile into your hand. They cost one less this turn. I love it. All right, I think that's all we want. Oh, yeah, we can, o okay, we can e only take each of these once as well. But I, I think that is as much as I want, realistically. So, that's a lot of curses. We're very cursed. But is that a bad thing when you've got Shadow Cloak?
We go strike. Snapshot gets dead on. Gambit puts them both back into my hand. I'd have to memento now if I want Snapshot to be dead on. I guess I'll do that. That's a fun turn. Twenty bucks. Determination. Whenever a debuff is applied to you, such as via doubt or shame, or our locket. Gain one strength, and upgrades to be an eight. I could take a second quick draw. Honestly, I think I want more copies of quick draw on this deck. This deck just wants to be able to draw all the powers. Immediately. And I'd like to go three elites, honestly. I, I think we can do it. Go up this way. Easy. Quick draw is a debuff too. Oh man. I had not considered that. That's cool. Get him. The blockening. Ripple quick draw. Gestalt. Gain two rugged and two vulnerable. That's right. Rugged reduces the next instance of attack damage taken to two. So it's kind of like a buffer of sorts. But it also makes you vulnerable. How's it going, Ellen? For Foy Ross, we've played a fair bit of Downfall before. I I find that Downfall tends to create more broken and wacky runs than Vanilla Spire, although not by a huge margin. Of the character and content mods that I've played, Downfall is amongst the more enjoyable and balanced. How's it going, Aaron VDB? Rotating streak ended at twenty. Our new world record for rotating streak. I'm gonna take that just all. I'm deeply tempted for by quick, quick, triple quick draw. Also got a dad joke that I owe the crowd. What do you call a frog who always lies? An amphibian. He's fibbing. This exhausts, but does do the five damage right away. Might as well. Don't have to use it now, but I'm thinking the explosive potion is going to get used in this fight. Because we need every advantage we can get. Also, uh, yeah, here's a here's a bad time for cards to be ethereal. We're gonna lose the memento unless I play it and take fifteen additional uh, thir ten additional damage. We'll lose the strike that I don't play. That's bad. That's bad. Oh wait, actually, retain trumps ethereal. I forgot about that as a keyword. Totally forgot about that. So playing the rugged means we'll take only two damage from these two attacks here. Kind of like two, two almost buffers. Mm -hmm. 
but not quite. Maybe the ethereal ones. Alright, things are going decently. Decently ish. Dang. Didn't draw either of those, huh? It'll have to do. Okay, we get through the fight, we get Brass Tacks. Start each combat with two Metallicize, two block per turn. That's rather nice. Coalescence, block and retain. Hold up, block and gain weak ourself or enervate. An attack that gives energy and draw with dead on. A little bit difficult to rel uh, rely on dead on with all these curses. Blammo Whammo, thanks for the tier one sub. Welcome to the QZ Sub Club. Backstreet Skeeter says, I don't understand the rugged card. Makes enemies stronger, but you only take two. Yeah, think of it like if Buffer Plus said gain two buffer, gain two vulnerable. It's better as long as you're not facing a multi-attack. Like, it'll be a source of block. It can negate a turn. But if you're if you're staring down a multi-attack, it's worse than nothing. Or too many enemies. I don't know that I want any of these cards. Next Elite's going to be pretty tricky, actually. Uh, Guest Alt will help a lot. We just need damage, so I'm, I'm considering taking Innervate, but I don't think it's a very good damage card, so I'm not going to. Oh, jeez. Uh, no, actually. I'm not going to lose 27 of my 41 health to get two upgrades and then fight an elite on 13 health. No, thank you. I will, however, get two relics in a row. First one being the Sundial. Every three times we shuffle the draw pile, gain two energy. Sure, there could be use there. Second one being Akabeko, making us do eight more damage with our first attack. Hopefully that will be enough to let us kill the Gremlin Knob. We'll see. I'm going to use the Memento on turn one. Like a good... Like a good Hermit. So I get to play Quick Draw Strike again. Maybe that's not a bad thing. Okay, well, we just block this, and then if I draw just all, we'll be in really good shape here. Because I can just block the two big hits from the knob using that. Ah, uh, heck. I did not, in fact, draw it. And therefore, ouch. At least we had some good block. Cool. That was that for longest Gremlin Knob fight. No problem. Come out of it with 27 health. We get a potion. We now have an ancient tea set for extra energy on turn one. And wow, here's an interesting set of options. Grudge. Nine damage to all enemies. Deals two more for all of your curse cards. So with... Uh, I wonder if that's current curses or starting curses. But we have five, so this should be 19 to all enemies. There's also Final Canter. Current curses. Okay, so even better then. 21 to all enemies. Minus any bit of Exhausted, which could be potentially all of them. Kind of weird. 
Final Canter. Retain, deal 13 damage for each curse in our hand. Zero cost probably deals 26 or 39. Upgrades for three more per... What is this upgrade to? Three more per curse. Wow. I think I want the Grudge. This offers area damage, which we currently lack a little bit. It's also reusable, unlike Final Canter. So I want to go Memento, then Defend, and now Snapshot has Dead On, which gives it block equal to the damage it deals, which is currently 19. 19 block, please. Thanks. Shoot him dead. Damage equal to your hand size. Roulette. Deal 18 damage to a random enemy. Discard your hand and then draw that many cards again. That's pretty powerful with um, Shadow Cloak. Kind of like a calculated gamble. But we're benefiting from curse draws. Let's give it a shot. I'll do it. Let's see upgrade to Shadow Cloak. Nine? Jeez, that's a large number. This upgrades to three cards. One turn of vulnerable. These are eleven three. Do I need the health? I don't think I do. Not two. I'm gonna upgrade the cloak first. It's our best block source at the moment. We'd like to get more. To give me the grudge. Give me the grudge. Dang it. But why not? One time, please. Oh, well, this is still exactly all of the block that I need, so we're fine. Blockening. Oops. So Grudge currently does eleven to all with weaken. That's pretty good still for one energy. That's very good actually. Block and apply weak if dead on, too. That seems like a pretty good block card. High caliper does damage and adds a strike. Two cards in one. A little worried about our damage for Hexaghost. Hmm. Maybe we need wide open, then. To ensure that our damage is sufficient. I think we might. Alright, and that's going to exhaust if I don't play it, so probably want to go Memento wide open, and then just let everything get destroyed. With the Rugged in play, I won't take damage for a while. Oh! <laughs> that's how that works? I had no idea. That's so funny. So, because... For the same reason Shame doesn't stay in your hand if you've got Runic Pyramid. Shame can't be exhausted by the Ethereal property because it activates at the end of turn, which counts as playing it, and then it discards. That's great. So I could get Snapshot Block, but I don't need it, right? We have the Rugged property, we'll just not take any damage here. Um, do I want to lose these attack cards? I'm okay losing Snapshot. Let's keep the strikes.
I'm gonna be able to draw that again. Let's get rid of that. This is gonna get back roulette for free? That seems pretty cool. Yeah, and then there's curses to draw into? Let's do it. Nice. Uh, and I won't play quick draw, I'll just play the strike. Keep the memento. Now we use memento to kill. Also would have full block that, too. Cool. Centennial Puzzle will be card draw the first time we take damage, and we have a Cultist Potion to get past the Hexaghost with, so I'm no longer worried about the boss. Cool. I'll be eagerly using this potion at the start of the uh, boss combat. Still don't feel like I want a Coalescence, but maybe I should consider it more strongly. 23 health is the right number of health to have. Let's see, Tuvuln or... Do we upgrade Grudge to slap in Act 2? Read these quick draws, actually. I put them in because they are draw positive with the upgrade, mostly. Without the upgrade, they're just kind of like, yikes. So, willing to lose any or all of these? Let's keep the snapshot around. Let's lose all this. Free roulette. Well, I won't say no to that. Yeah. Take exactly one. Although that's going to cause the haunted to make everything ethereal. I don't think I want that. What a shame. Right, I have to choose between Grudge, Gestalt, Quick Draw Plus. It's a little annoying. Just let's get this played. Already vulnerable, so no reason not to play this. Roulette will draw into the doubt, which will give me block, or I can snapshot for block. Roulette will also give me two energy. I could exhaust the doubt, but I'm not actually sure that I want to. Currently gives me a lot of block every time I draw it, you know? Heck it, let's just both be vulnerable forever. And, and pretend like it's good. Yeah. God. Um, 18, 20, 22. We're at 23. We currently live on one hit point. Terrifying. Uh, I guess I don't use the potion because we'll be fine. Oh yeah, we have rugged actually, so we're we're taking more than that. Uh, less than that, rather. Two plus nine. Even better. Even better. Black Wind deals damage equal to our missing health. That could be up to a lot of... 
it's ethereal though it's kind of awkward reprieve already ethereal heal 12 once per combat that's kind of nice or high noon uh, power whenever you play a strike or defend draw a card that's rather intriguing Do we actually play that many strikes or defends? I don't think so. Upgrades to one cost. Like, Mummy Hand speaks for High Noon a little bit, but I don't think it's that good. I'm liking the Reprieve quite a lot, especially with this large amount of max health that we have. Upgrade of Black Wind is one cost. Upgrade of Reprieve is heal 15. Let's take the Reprieve. Oh my. And some serious choices. Choice one, Astrolabe. Transform three cards and upgrade them. Choice two, transform eight cards. All of our strikes and defends. Usually I, I value Astrolabe at about twice. Like uh, double, double the number of transforms because they're getting upgraded. So Astrolabe is as good as transform six, but this is transform eight. So eight would be better than six. However, our third option... The Clast Locket, replacing the old locket. The first time you draw a curse each turn, exhaust it and draw two cards. Upon pickup, obtain two additional curses, two additional injury curses. So we'll gain another 12 max health if I take this. It's also going to turn our curses into draw, but also auto exhaust. Which is not necessarily a good thing. Does does go with the full curse build, though, you know? If we were to take uh, Class Lock, it feels like we would need curses uh, generated in our deck somehow. Yeah, sure is a nice draw relic. Sure is nice going over 100 max L, too. How's it going, Marshall Gaming? All these strikes and defends, though. Hmm. What if I transformed and upgraded three curses? Oh, let's let's do full curse build. I want to do it. Never again. That's what they said last time. And that's what they'll say next time. All right, let us... Let us go to store, since we are rich. How strong are we in combat? I haven't the foggiest idea. This will help, though. Kill me for 12. Do this first. Play this one too. Oh, I love that Rugged is like buffer, except it actually works with the Centennial puzzle. That's good. We don't get Shadow Cloak in play now. We're going to have a problem. There it is. And that made Reprieve free. Best of all worlds. Okay. Now we're fine. Oh, drawing Haunted off the Centennial Puzzle is actually good, because it only applies Ethereal to some of the stuff in our hand. That makes sense. Beautiful fight. Grade two random cards in your hand. Reduce the cost of a random card in your hand. Or another roulette. No, we don't want any of this. Not unupgraded, we don't. Sad Chai Chaves, thanks for seven months of support. How are the speed runs going? Currently taking a break with oh, with his hermit run here, but the speed runes have been pretty successful by and large. Pretty happy with them. 
So yeah, there's a lot of things I could do in this shop, but uh, let me remind you that this deck contains... Interesting, curses are never at the end here. Seven curses, so this is seven points of strength. Seven. That's a big number. Yeah, Gurya, eat your heart out. Get absolutely blapped, my friends. Grudge deals 22. Let's take two more. I see the thing about um, Rugged is that it doesn't reduce the damage to zero, so you still lose health. Not a lot of health, but... Eh. Zero cost, five block, apply three bruise to all enemies. Interesting. I like the free upgrade on it, but... Malice says, exhaust a card, deal 16. If you exhaust a curse, do it to all enemies. That's okay, but at two cost, I don't know. Take one more copy of just all. Yeah, I will. Suspicious house. Traveling through the city, your ears are pierced by a shrill, inhuman cry coming from a nearby house. Upon investigation, you find an inhabitant of the city trying to silence a small serpentine creature trapped in a cage. Hey, what are you doing in my house? Get out. The cage critter is startled and hops back into a corner of its confinement. It clearly is not happy here. We can rescue the Sneko. Gain Young Sneko. Deal five damage to a random enemy at the start of your turn. But we get one Bewildered Curse, which is going to reroll the cost of cards in our hand. It's gaining a curse, so uh, yeah, give me it. How many curses is too many? I don't think there is such a thing. You want it? Fine. It's not worth the trouble. With a frustrated sigh, the captor unlocks the cage and reaches in. With a surprising swiftness, the serpent bites his finger with all the strength its tiny jaw can muster. With a quick intervention, you punch the man, clearly knocking him out cold before he can retaliate against the critter. The creature happily crawls up to your hand when you offer it, and the two of you continue through the spire together. You shall call her Clementine. Bewilderingly adorable. So that's an event from the Downfall mod, and oh my goodness, they weren't kidding. The cuteness, the cuteness is real. Get him, Clementine. Um, so how does this work? Oh yeah, we still muddled the hand, but that was actually a good thing. Get muddled, nerds. And then all this is ethereal. Goodbye. Not that one, Clementine. Actually, wait. Maybe that one. Got a reprieve to play? Noted. So don't play the quick draw. Grudge would kill. Play the snapshot. This deck is amazing. Hey, a power. Start your turn, concentrate. That's not a power we really want. Uh, concentrate activates dead on effects each turn without them being in the middle of the hand. It's actually not too bad. No holds barred. 22 damage and apply bruise to all enemies, but gain less energy next turn. Hmm. I've been considering a couple of these dead on cards. If I take, take aim. 
Let's take take aim. Let's do it. Let's do it. And do we upgrade a card before the elite? Or do we visit the rest site after the elite? I want to upgrade Grudge going into this elite fight. Please make Grudge do infinity damage. Oh yeah, I also want the energy turn one. That's right. Wow, I didn't draw any of my uh, curses. 25 damage. I've got so much energy. Lap you first. And play this, this, and this. Get him, little snack. Oh dear. So what we've got here is an example of uh, the rugged card backfiring. I'll take 2 plus 2 plus 16. I guess that's not necessarily backfiring, but... Hmm. Discard it. Oof, that is uh, extra bad. Thanks for that. Ouch. Big ouch. draw those. Bye. Alright, we successfully navigated our Gremlin Leader fight. We get a just-in-time Matroshka. Our next two chests will contain two relics. Maintenance. Strikes deal more damage this combat, gain one dex. This card costs more, this combat. Interesting. Very interesting. We'd really like to find a couple Deadeye cards now. One that upgrades other stuff would be good. Man with an eye patch and a devilish grin strides up to you. Hey there, stranger. Interested in advancing science? I can make you stronger than any training or blessing. You're gonna need it if you're gonna if you're one of those heroes with a death wish. So we can gain jacks, trading hit points for strength. We could transform to or obtain the mutagenic strength relic. Giving us more strength on turn one. We could have 11 strength on turn one with Akabeko. It's pretty spicy. I said 2485. What do you call a drug making chemist that experiments on trees? A log mentor. I think what I'm going to do here is transform cards, and we're going to, as a couple of chat members are, are noting here, one option that we have is to transform curses, specifically the curses that are giving us the most trouble, which is this bewildered and these haunted. So I'll do uh, one of each. Transforming curses guarantees that you get new curses, and in so doing, we activate the Darkstone Periapt again. By the way, this is a 48 max HP Darkstone Periapt, giving us 12 more max health. So now we have another Shame and a Parasite. Curses I'm much more okay with. Superb. I agree, sir. Superb. Am I going through that shop to fight the Burning Elite? I think yes. The answer is yes, I am. Uh, do I want the upgrade or the enemy? I want the upgrade. More than three mangoes. Tricky's Bolster Raw. The first time you play a power card each combat. Get six block and one strength. Cool. And we'll uh, we'll lose the tiny chest. Gain the Sapphire Key. Even stronger now. Free block for the first power is pretty cool too. 
I'm gonna upgrade the vulnerable on the wide open card. Combo. Whenever you trigger a dead-on effect, add a random card with dead-on to your hand. That's kind of cool. Manifest. Gain 13 block. Draw two curses. There's also Spite. Deal 5 damage twice. Draw two curses. A.K.A. 15 damage twice. Spite is really good. Spite's better than card remove here, probably. I uh, can only get Spite or Manifest, but not both. I could do Manifest plus Card Remove. Hmm. Virtue is also pretty cool. Re reduce our debuffs. We're likely to be weak and frail a lot of the time. Yeah, Spite's both damage and block. I think Spite is the better card by quite a bit. It's just a question of, uh, is it worth the additional money? I'm not sure. Draw three is the upgrade. Draw three curses, that is. Read the other quick draw. Does Virtue still remove confusion? Ooh, good question. Probably. It's a debuff. I guess is yes. 46 damage to all enemies. Says Grudge. Make that 47. Absolute nonsense. Get him, little snack. Oh, but he's regenerating with equal proportion. Hold on, we've got a thingy to play. I intend to play it. Beautiful. Question card gives us more options at card rewards. Which means we're likely to find more powers. Smoking barrel. When you trigger a dead on effect, your next attack deals four more damage. It's also a Desperado Plus, a card that deal doubles its damage every time you play it. We're looking for a card with a dead on effect. Scavenge is one, letting us gain five gold. It's not a whole lot, but it is something. I think I'm gonna skip all of these, personally. But we'll be skipping fewer cards in the future, now that we have Question Card. Yeah, we healed off of our Burning Elite. That's, that's a pretty good sign, generally speaking. Add Ethereal to all of these, huh? All right. Take it. Another copy of Scavenge, otherwise, pass. Pass, pass, pass. Great covet to draw one more. It's actually a reasonable time to recall. Let's do that. I don't have that many good upgrades left. All right, so for the champ fight, we have to be careful not to exhaust everything too quickly. I do want to get rid of some of these guards. Drawing will give me block, too. Perfect. Take one. Still reduces rugged, right? Yeah. For example, I don't want to draw... Is that a ethereal card? It's already gone? It's already gone. Not clear where it went to me, but it's already gone. Okay, cool.
could guest alt again, or we can try to keep this rugged. Uh, it worked. I'll just be frail then. Don't mind me. We're going to run out of curses, though, over time, because we're automatically exhausting them. Right, that's what happened to the Ethereal card. Got exhausted by the class locket. I was a little confused there. Where did it go? No idea. I was completely at a loss. The answer is we just go, go ham here. Give the champ a proper blapping. No, we've got three stacks of rugged, so we can just sort of ignore... Champs execute attempts. Concentrated is the uh, the red eye effect, which is guaranteeing us dead on activations. Not that it does me any good here. Rob. That worked out beautifully. Are there cards that add curses during combat? Yes, we're hoping to see some of them soon. Overwhelming power. That's also a debuff. Gain three energy, draw three cards. If you end your turn with zero energy, lose health. That applies on every turn thereafter. Oh yeah, from beyond, for each card in your exhaust pile, a random enemy loses 5 health. Shame it doesn't scale with our absurd strength, but could be otherwise powerful. I think it's a pretty decent time for uh, Final Canter as well. Can from beyond pass the heart's invincible? No. No, the heart will still uh, prevent itself from losing life. Go overwhelming power. I could still still see this turning into uh, a debuff build, and you better believe I'm going to take a cursed key. Maybe I should have taken the tiny chest after all. Gain energy every turn. If we open a non-boss chest, gain a curse. Oh no, not a curse! How horrible! What will I ever do with a curse? I want to fight three elites, I can't go to a shop. I guess that's fine, because I'm kind of poor anyway. Three six tall. That's so ridiculously absurd. How much damage this does. Hey, another copy of Spite. I'll take that. In so many copies of Take Aim. Player could be nice. One week, one Vuln. Don't have a real good way to apply that to enemies. Weak will make overwhelmingly powerful foes a lot easier to deal with. I'm gonna grab that for now. So we get overwhelming power. If we end our turn with zero energy, lose four HP. It's a debuff that applies to us. I should use grudge there. Perfect. 
So we'll lose health at the end of the turn because of overwhelming power. Let's lose four, notably, because Rugged only applies to unblocked attack damage. So there's another upside to Rugged. Get a fairy in a bottle, I might take that. I like the double power potions quite a lot. I think they're very valuable, but fairy in a bottle with this much max health is also pretty juicy. Pretty juicy. Flash powder is a permanent strength reaction. Let's take one of those. Upgrades to two, right? Yeah. Make that a disarm plus. Leave the fairy on the ground. Sorry, fairy. You are not worthy. That's what I determined. Grudge. Freakingly destroyed, as they say. Dang. Double damage with dead on. That's a very powerful card. Low profile gains additional block for each debuff we have. Take the headshot. Headshot. You come across shimmering water flowing endlessly from a fountain on a nearby wall. Giving us the option to remove all of our curses. Literally all of them. Which arguably makes us a lot weaker, actually. <laughs> this won't be the first time I ignore the Divine Fountain, but this is definitely one of the funniest times for this thing to show up. Eight free removes, Twitch chat. That's pretty good. But, uh... My strength, you know? My, my block engine, my everything. Unsure of the nature of the water, you continue on your way. Parched. So thirsty. Hmm. So thirsty. Gambit here? Let's Gambit here. Yeah! 36 damage. Try it, fool. Get a mob bank, giving us money, money, money until we get to Act 4. Pretty happy with that. Adapt. At the start of your turn, you can exhaust a card to gain 8 block. Upgrade is... 2 cost. Oh, nicely done, Faley. Downfall bot compatibility. The power. That's cool. There's also a manifest here. Or virtue. Virtue seems like it might have a lot of use as well. Removing our own vulnerable, frail, and weak. Let's see upgrade on this. Two. I'll take it. Virtue probably removes overwhelming power. Yes, it should. I'm going to draw no cards next turn, and it's going to suck. Yay! Let's gain Rugged so that I don't die. To drawing three cards. Actually, that wasn't too bad. You ever become vulnerable against Transient? It's a scary thing. 90 damage. 
Behold, I do 40. So, what does Virtue reduce? Virtue reduces the draw reduction and the weaken. Oh, I didn't think about reducing the draw reduction from these, uh, from these quick draws. Oh, man. Uh, cool. That's cool. Oh, yes. And you notice that it reduced the magnitude of the overwhelming power from four hit points to three hit points now if we end our turn with zero energy. Very cool. Oh yeah, stop doing that. Don't be silly. That's definitely something I gotta get out of the habit of though. There's combo again. Whenever you trigger a dead on fact, add a random card with dead on to your hand. Combos really nicely with um, take aim. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. See how often it actually does stuff for us. I, for one, am unsure. Uh oh, there's going to be a curse if we open the chest. How daunting! Click. Writhe is guaranteed extra draw on turn one. Ceramic Fish, unfortunately, a little bit late here, but we love the additional energy from Happy Flower. We're now at 54 max HP from the Darkstone Periapt. Pretty cool. Uh-oh. My curses. No. Oh, those are saved. They're immune to ethereal. Ha! Ah. Easy. So then we virtue. Remove the draw reduction. So we take no draw reduction from those cards now. Beautiful. Spend the last energy. Unless it kills, it does not. We get Dead Eye. Dead on gain two strength. I'll take it. The ornamental fan will now give us block for playing enough attacks. Dead Man's Hand. Discard your hand, add the three rarest cards from your draw pile to your hand. Interesting. Jacob Ripper says, Speaking of curses, what is Ironclad's favorite attack when he curses? A swearing blow. Misfire makes curses. It's kind of a crap way to make curses, but I do need a way to make curses, so I'll take it. first, actually. I will not be weakened. You're weakened.
Determination. Whenever a debuff is applied to you, gain one strength. We've seen this a few times before. I'm definitely going to click on it now. Because we know how many debuffs are applied to us. Many debuffs. Many. Many debuffs. Yes, damage me. Do it. Gestalt just kind of makes everything easy here. Still got Akabeko. Akabeko. Draw a second time here, might as well. We're only gonna lose one of the drawdown. It's okay. Oh, I should have removed my weekend before I played all this attack, though. Too many debuffs to keep track of, I tell ya. Eighty damage headshot. Kerblam. Strike Dummy makes our strikes do more damage. This says retain three. That's pretty spicy. Give me that. Groove Sharpness gives us 25 counter. It means deal 25 back to the next enemy that attacks us. That's decent, but not decent enough. This shop, however, is amazing. Don't want to know Mamori, sadly. There's a decent uh, Curse Generator. Spray and Pray. Deal four damage to a random enemy three times. Put a doubt in the draw pile. So it's Strength Scaling and Curse Generation at the same time. And I think I do want to remove one of our basic Defend cards. Just so we draw these less frequently. They're not as good as Curses. KD asked, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Koozie Sub Club. Welcome, welcome. That I plus to gain more strength. Your next dead on effect this turn triggers twice. Or a manifest for more curse draw. Give me the manifest. This is a 42 card deck, although note that nine of those cards are curses. Which is silly. That goes to draw. To down to two. This gets retained. I actually wanted to upgrade the purity card, the virtue. Reduce each debuff by two. Ooh, good question how that works with uh, double damage. No idea. Made a lot of important stuff ethereal, unfortunately. Q 
can't do three more cards unless I power potion. that strength from the debuffs though do you see that the power the overwhelming power Headshot. All right, bird nerd, you're next. I actually got Shadow Cloak early in the combat this time. Good job, me. Fifty four damage. Yeah, don't play overwhelming power. I think we can skip that one. Alright, well, I might as well play this if I'm going to remove it anyway. Draw pile. Give it to me. Thank you. It's working. I love it. Square Rudy, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Koozie Sub Club. You're so welcome for all the content. Thanks for watching. Uh oh. No. This turn's gonna hurt a bit. Actually, I have Rugged, right? We'll take two. Never mind. This turn won't hurt at all. Hopefully, I never played Power Overwhelming in the first place. Just works. When you think of a voids are kinda like curses. GG. GG. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all these curse cards? You reach for your halter's holster, dealing 2129. Hopefully to be a good year. We're going to get so much strength from the heart on turn one. I love it. Anything I'd like to upgrade rather than... That nah, doesn't even increase the number of hits. Could increase the number of curses drawn, maybe. I'll just take the heal nine. medical kit here would let me play status cards that are normally unplayable, getting rid of them so that we can draw only our curses over and over again. I think I like that here quite a bit. 
What are these other relics? Broken Tooth. Whenever you beat an elite encounter, gain one strength at the start of each combat for the rest of, an act, of the act. So, bonuses for the fights after the elites. Particularly helpful for defeating the boss after taking many elites. Or the Gemstone Gun. Upon pickup, choose three gems at the start of each combat. Gain a card with Retain, Exhaust, and each chosen gem socketed. Interesting. So you, like, build a card with some properties. Curious. Very curious. Well, I'm quite happy with Double Energy Potion, Medical Kit, and 125 max health. I cannot wait to see what this gets us. All right, Spray and Prey, who are we targeting? This one, you got it. Dead. Look at all these curses. <laughs> Here's a thumbnail for you, yeah, good. Power overwhelming. Yes? I think the best way to do this without losing too many hit points. I take nine. And I can heal twelve. That's good enough. With reprieve. Candle lets us play our curse cards to lose one hit point and exhaust a more fitting final relic I cannot personally imagine. Zach 512, what does the hermit like to order at a bar? A cloak and lager. How about that? Tempted here between quick draw, draw and another shadow cloak. I suppose we want the extra big block per, uh, per curse, probably. Is that every curse relic? I think it is. We truly got the ultimate curse build. So we do have Centennial. We play the shadow cloak first. What does the hermit do to remove bugs at his local church? Spray and pray. Oof. Oh, that's right. We get blocked for playing the first power. That's correct. Double determination. Let's do it. And you? Triple determination. Yeah. Let's just do triple determination. Wouldn't you? Whenever a debuff is applied, you gain three strength. Includes just alt. You're gonna make me vulnerable anyway. I'll make myself vulnerable. Plus three strength, plus three more strength. Gamba. I'll then give you negative strength so the multi-hit doesn't do anything. That's perfect, actually. Play this? Sure. So multi-hit is zero. That means we can't waste our rugged on it. Get rid of 
this. Draw some curses? Yeah. Doubt you may make me stronger. This we just block with rugged, I don't care. Let's get rid of rail. There's no rod out to get rid of. Really nice that rugged doesn't apply to non-attack damage, so I can't lose it to the beat of death like I could buffer here. Spite does 63 damage twice, because we now have a 37 strength somehow. Like you do. Give me another curse. This is actually not ethereal. Be back for Gambit later. Alright, take game. You've taken a little while to get here. I accept that. My rugged. So each quick draw also gives me three strength because it is applying a debuff to me. It's absurd, right? Simply absurd. Our last rugged goes away. GG, Mr. Hart. This headshot deals 174. Kerblam! GG. GG. GG, what a run. Full curse build. We managed to actually make it work. I am so thrilled. I am so, so thrilled. Kind of ironic to headshot a heart, right? We were cursed from the very beginning. GG. GG, Twitch chat. GG. The believers win. Please welcome says, can you kill the heart and die to beat of death? Mutually assured destruction? Yes, that is possible, and it does count as a loss for the player, if that happens. GG. Now, what has it been done? The spire sleeped, and so shall I. GG, Twitch chat. What a beautiful run history. Got all those curses, not eight curse cards, plus our Ascender's Bane. 54 Max Elf Darkstone Periapt. What a cool run, what a cool run. Gain Uncommon Relic. Yeah, it's the uh, interaction between uh, the more Niao mod made by Uniquely K and the Run History Plus mod. When the Run History Plus tries to refer to a starting bonus that doesn't normally exist, it doesn't have a proper description for it. But at least it's able to display it. That's pretty cool. Pretty hard to account for possible mod interactions when you're designing a mod for any game. So when you've got multiple mods installed, expecting that there aren't uh, weird weirdnesses to, uh, to look into is pretty impossible. Well, I'm extremely happy with that Hermit run. I don't think we need to do any more. Let us shift things over to some Spire with friends and do some races with the community here. 
So Dapper Howard says, what mods will be active for the races beyond Spire with Friends? When playing with Spire with, friend, with Friends, you should use base mod and nothing else. You don't need um, SCS lib. Just base mod, Spire with Friends. No other mods. For maximum compatib compatibility. We don't want anybody using content or gameplay mods, because they'll desynchronize from the other players if they do. So that'll be in a few minutes. Yeah, let me actually boot up the um, Spire with Friends. But I gotta take a quick break as well before we switch thoughts here. Change horses midstream. So to speak. Hey, Armor of God. Glad you're enjoying the A20 streak videos. Still, uh, still kind of in disbelief that we managed to get a 20. 20 0. That is absurd. Where is it? Spire with friends. There it is. Space mod, spire with friends. That's what we're playing with. Summon the Oobla to destroy me. Beautiful. Wait. There it is. Okay. Actually, Xavier, hello and welcome. Started playing because of my YouTube. Highest ascension is 10 with Ironclad. That's not too bad. Especially if you're still relatively new to the game. Ascension 20 for most players takes over 100 hours. Just, I mean, you've got to... 20 successful runs alone is a, is a daunting challenge. Three mods. What mods have we got? Oh, yeah, I've got UI sliders as well. Whoops. That shouldn't break anything for anybody. Um, but I did forget to disable that one. Yeah, that shouldn't break anything for anybody. But we'll display... Um, we'll display some issues. Uh, an exclamation point for everybody. So, what I'm going to do is host some races here. Everybody's going to join as the same character. This is starting with the Ironclad here. And everybody connects to a, a multiplayer session, essentially. We all play on the same seed, so we all have the same random occurrences. And whoever gets to the end, defeating the boss of Act 3 first, is declared the victor. We'll be starting on Ascension 1 with the Clad here, but we might have some races later on that are a bit more challenging. So if you want to join these races yourself, what you'll need to do is download the Spire with Friends mod. Exclamation point multiplayer has a link to it. Uh, and then from the Versus screen, you should see a lobby hosted by yours truly. I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to join and populate this first race. If you missed your chance to get in on the first one, there will be more shortly after. But I'm going to take a quick break here while people are joining and connecting to refill my legs, stretch my water, and all that. Try to keep this one quick. Back in a few, and when we, when we return, it's Zoomy time. Be right back, folks. Don't go nowhere.
Alrighty, folks, we're back, and I see we've got a relatively stacked lobby here. Groudon, legendary Pokemon, Mr. Baconudo, Yug Man Fist, Dapper, Scruffy. Lots of potential contestants here. Couple more coming in. Last minute here as well. See you later, Faley. Thanks for dropping by and uh, modding. Good luck. And like I said, even if you missed this one, don't worry. There will be more coming up soon. All right, ready up. Looks like we got our last minute entries here. Yeah, please don't try to stick around. Go, go get to your appointment. Be gone. All right. Good luck. Have fun. First to the end wins. GG, everyone. Let's go. Remember, everyone's on the same seed. We can see what boss relics people have. So if somebody chooses the boss swap, then uh, everybody else will know what they get, which is Velvet Choker. Looks like. I see I got a Fiend Fire to start. I'm going to start here. But now it's go time. We got to go. Faster animations are definitely going to be an important part of staying ahead of everybody here. Do I take an Anger? Yes. Is it a good card? I have no idea. Not, uh, I'll take a Flex, actually. I really like Flex. Flex is a sweet card. Goes well with Whirlwind and the like. Those aren't good enough. Not going to take a Disarm. We're not going for the heart or anything. So there's no need. Yeah, if you crashed, apologies. We'll have to get in on the next one. That is a bummer. Boomer? Yeah, I'll take a boomer. Ooh. Flash of steel. Now, secret technique for the flex. Was that actually good enough? I have no idea. Doesn't look like it. Heavy Blade's not good enough? I don't think so. If I fight one leader, two. Just one. Just one. Sword Booterang. And okay, I think everybody who has their wits about them is going to be purchasing the Brimstone here at the first shop, if they've got money for it anyway. Brimstone giving two strength per turn is definitely the way to go here. Absolutely blapping just about everything. This is a race, yes, first to the end is the victor. Them's the rules, kid. Good luck. I'll take a power through with a fiend fire. Kind of wishing I took that heavy blade earlier. Oh well. Zoom, actually. Choker Ecto Cube. Let's go. Ecto. I'm not going to need that much more money the rest of this run. 
be going as quickly as we can. Shops aren't all that useful. Let's see. It's our best path to the act. I see a different path I'm going to take from Mr. Mikinudo. Maybe we can save a couple combats worth. Riddick Cube might have actually been really good, admittedly. Yoink. Yes. Necro, Necro, Necro. Yes, Necro. Amazing. Where's the whirlwind? Where's the whirlwind? I need it. Can't take Hello World. It's illegal. Give him the Necro. Kerblam. Feel No Pain Plus is also very, very good, for the record. Oh. <laughs> More strength. Maybe I didn't need that, actually. And Mekinudo is cruising. Sad turn one. We're already through the boss. is going to be time eater. We just need the fastest way through the act here. Uh, going through two elites looks a little chunky. Looks like it's two elites basically no matter what. We'll follow in Maester Baganudo's stead. I have relative faith that we can kill faster than, <clears throat> than our opponents can. One, take that one. It's a really good card. It's a really, really, really good card. Dang it. Crap. 
Whoops. Did not actually want to do that, but here we are. Dang it. Unwanted combat. Bummer. That probably makes a difference there. If this had been an event, I think I'd have a better chance. As it stands, pretty unlikely. Too. Yeah, Mr. Bakeru is done with 10 minutes, 18 minutes. Had a double tap. That might have made the difference. Oh, he had the whirlwind. I never found the whirlwind. That makes sense. GG. Let's see if I can actually win. Yes. GG. 10 minutes, 44 seconds. We're 30 seconds behind. Well played. Well played. GG. End of the road, kid. A very well earned first place. Didn't find Necro. That's a bummer. We had the we had the coolest coolest blapping. I think I actually added a few too many um, defensive things. We didn't need this feel no pain or this panic button for for zero ascension play. GG. GG. <clears throat> All right, let's throw up a new lobby. Do one more ironclad Ascension 1, under the same conditions. And then we'll start switching it up. See if people can do defect fast. Silent fast. Imagine ironclad is the, the one most people are familiar with going quickly on, anyway. Generally considered the speedrun character. Joseph King says, Baylor, do you think there's any benefit to climbing the Ascension Ladder on only heart wins versus just any wins? It'll change how you interact with the game difficulty-wise, constantly seeking heart kills. It'll require you to sort of master a difficulty before you move on to the next one. So it might give you a more gradual progression. It can be that you end up, uh, if you play only on the highest available Ascension, then you end up outstripping your own skill by getting a few good runs, and then you're suddenly unable to win any runs because you haven't taken to heart the lessons that uh, the earlier difficulties are meant to teach you. This is particularly true for players trying to cross the Ascension 17, 18, 19 barrier for the first time. They may have fallen into playstyle habits that are simply non-viable uh, with the diff modified attack patterns of enemies on the highest Ascension levels. Habits like picking a block, two block cards in your first two uh, three card rewards. Shandai says, oh, hey, that's me with Silent. Can't beat Silent Ascension 17 at all. Are you obsessed with blocking all of the damage every turn? That can get you really badly going on to the high Ascensions. Climbing the rotating ascension ladder can't get past ascension three defect for the life of you. Hmm. I 
Low Ascension Defect is, is really quite flexible. You have to make sure that you're, you're not adding too many powers. I think that's one of the easiest things to overdo on the Defect. Is get too many powers, too many cards that don't generate block or deal damage on the turn you play them. Beware such cards. Um, but do try to get attacks, upgraded attacks especially, and uh, orbs into your orb slots. Will there be any A20 versus runs today? I think so. I think we'll find time. <laughs> Alright, best of luck to our racers here. Let's embark as soon as Delta's ready. Let's go. I go this way. Then strikes better than no strike. No elite for free, huh? Well, that's fine. These can be quite rewarding early on, but they can also be really, really slow. There's a barricade in the uh, matching keep if you want it. Not sure anybody does want it. But, you know. Not being able to afford Chemex is pretty sad. Or is it? Oh my god, it is. <laughs> uh, Juzu's good, though. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. I'll remove this. We are fighting Guardian, though. So maybe don't remove all of that. And how there's always a Chemex Whirlwind in these runs. Every time. What? <clears throat> Seems like a pretty good Sneko Eye. Wow, they zoom in though. Uh, I guess this is the way to go. Yeah, with Juzu, everybody's gonna be zooming, right? Oh my goodness, I'm so sad about Chemex. God dang it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> no, I made such a mistake. How am I possibly gonna complete compete? Disaster. Oops. What am I doing here? Offering. He has one whirlwind and a bloodletting. I, I see what's going on over there. 
powerful. Wait, where's the map? There. That was weird. I think Dark Embrace is good. Feels like it's gotta be good on some level, somewhere. Mr. Bacon Noodle disconnected? What happened? Bummer. Big bummer. Not that much damage, though, huh? <laughs> Guess I need a red skull. Beat on the bone, save me. Forty-seven. We got too much, too much power. What's going on there? Too much power. It's only seven minutes in here. How is anyone supposed to keep up with this? Then they're gone. Vanished like a fart in the wind. Can happen to the best of us. Now I actually don't have any cards in my deck anymore. Am I going to survive? Maybe. Didn't use my block push in there. Whoops. <clears throat> Demon form. Yes. Rennet cube? No, we just need more energy. Yeah, the trail ends cold. Oh, they must have died to the two elites back to back. Oof. Yeah, you really do want to avoid elites entirely. Look at this. This is the path you should have taken up the very far right here. That's what we'll be doing. How about no elites? Thank you. Please and thank you. Shrug plus the lead. I'll take one block card. Yeah, it's a good reminder not to give up. You never know when the person who seems like they're winning might suddenly have a disaster occur. It's 
not over till it's over. McBeave is catching up, actually. Gotta pick up the pace here. That was the right play, but here we are. need to <clears throat> not get murdered here. You know? I think we'd love a sundial, actually. Don't play Fiend Fire till the last turn, or you'll die. Second place! Uh oh. Stretching on a bit slow now, huh? Okay, we've got enough removals, actually. Let's just heal. Just faster not even to look at the card rewards sometimes. Shoot. Yeah, GG's to everybody who uh, who plays and participates, success or failure. Thanks for playing. All right, Stoneu and Decca versus us. Demon form turn one. Can't ask for much better than that. Oops. Order. Etc. Three bull instead of one, but oh well. Did what I did. I thought it was best. Even if it wasn't. Fifty-one. No, we've been vanquished. Twitch chat by only a ten-second margin. Did we fail on that one? I think we could have been ten seconds faster. So well played, well earned. GGS. Close second place. Yeah, I definitely think avoiding the elites this act was the fastest way to get through. Mere seconds of difference. GG. GG.
All right, let's change the class up. Let's do a uh, defect run next. With everybody here. Prove your speed skills on the robot. That is my imploration to everyone. Uh, not Ascension 20, sorry. Uh, Ascension 1, yeah, bonus, lament only, just like the Ironclad. Hello and welcome to Willoughby. To get in, you'll need to download the Spire with Friends mod. There's a link there in chat, the exclamation point multiplayer command. From the Spire with Friends main menu, click on Versus. And when I'm in the lobby here, it should appear publicly. Anyone can join who has the mod installed. GG Percher Williams. Thanks for racing. It's always fun going head to head with everybody. Do I think Collect would be a better card on Ironclad? Definitely, Toaster King. I think Ironclad sees a lot of value in being able to kind of retain energy from turn to turn. And the exhaust spam, of course, is excellent there, too. Starlight Wyvern, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the QZ sub club. I also think the Ironclad could do with a second uh, X-Cost card. I've always wanted to see uh, an X-Cost card for Ironclad that simply says, Gain X Strength. What is Lament Only? Lament Only means you'll be offered Nyao's Lament as uh, your starting option. So everybody will start with the first three combats have one hit point. Essentially lets the run just get started a little quicker. Wow, we've got even more people here for this one. 23 folks ready to race with the defect. Can we be first amongst them? That is the question. The Black Bomb, thank you as well for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Pushing us a little bit closer towards our next community day like this one. Oh, I, I definitely think it'd be cool if there was an Ironclad card that scaled with missing health. The Ironclad can get the most health of anybody. Hundreds of max health sometimes. So being able to leverage that into a hundreds of something card would be pretty cool. Just waiting on Iglan to ready up. And Zuthus getting in there. How's it going, Zuthus? Please click your ready buttons so that we may begin. A no mouse speedrun. Can't find it. Good luck. Are you controller or just keyboard only? I don't think you can play Spire keyboard only, can you? Final warning to Iglan. You do not ready up, we'll have to leave without you. Might be that they're stuck or... Uh... Oh, there they go. Okay, let's go. Good luck, have fun. Let's play. So, no one hit point elites available. I see a pretty speedy path through the act, though. I believe in the power of Streamline as a speedrun card. Not those cards, though. Um, I'll take a Kapal River. I don't know if it's actually any good, but I'll do it. Wait, that was... Uh, I did that wrong. I could have killed them both that turn. Foolish. I think I want to reprogram. Dual cast, not defend. Defending too much in these fights.
Not gonna go for a second elite. I don't want to risk the chance that that sentries and it takes way too long. It's not gonna be worth it. beat Hexaghost with this deck? Didn't evaluate that. I think the answer is yes. Looks like yes. Block a little bit, though. Guess a choker. Maybe that was actually Frozen Core. Uh, frozen Core is not going to make me go faster, though. I also need to figure out how this deck is going to continue to scale, or it's not going to. I'm going to take a ton of event rooms this act. A uh, little risky, actually. I think we're going to end up in a problem situation momentarily. We'll see. Someone took the Frozen Core. Hologram's great. Hang it. Needs more energy, though. We have Costi successfully doing a node duplication of some kind. Very good. Double your boss relics, double your fun, they say. Uh, I don't want warp tongs, but I appreciate the gesture. Dang it. Use the flex potion. Feels right. Strike dummy's okay. Let it. Yeah, because of the compelled river. Oh. That's a better card. Perfect. Heck yeah, I'll take a Recycle Plus. That's going to be weird. Not necessarily fast, but definitely good. Helps me beat Champ, for example. So, that's nice. Low, but I believe I believe in the power. The focus pot.
sure I'll be using those potions a little bit more aggressively. Or I'm gonna die. Strike dummy, thank you. Smoke bomb? Dude, nice. Get me out of here. Goodbye. Alright, I don't have enough health to beat champ, so let's rest. Do I need a reinforced body? I don't think so. That's too many boss relics. You're in violation of international boss relic law. You can't do this. GG. Take an echo form. Yes. Take a fusion hammer. Also, yes. All right. How speedily can we proceed through the act? That looks like a pretty good path. But is it actually the best one? I don't think so. I think this one is. of the new duplication. Pretty powerful. Oh, they got hyper beam. I understand why the speed is so fast. If only I had a hyper beam. Life would be a lot simpler then in hyperbeam having land. And they're done. 10 minutes, 58 seconds. I'm definitely not going to be able to do that. Since it's already too late, but let's, let's see how much longer it takes to finish the act. I think with this path, we've got a decent chance. GG's. She lost dual cast. That's okay. Jealous I never saw a hyper beam, you know?
so many rest sites this way. I felt like it had to be ultimately the better option. Let's see. Problem is we just can't get going until the, the streamline is online or whatever. It's just not enough. Cute. Maybe I should have taken that. Like that rest noise, the rest music. And then we're there, pretty much. All we gotta do is win this fight without being terrible. Easier said than done, I know. Claw? This is no claw deck. This is a double echo form deck against the Awakened One, obviously. And by double I meant triple. This is infinite echo forms against the Awakened One deck. Dot com. Get him. I need this after a dual cast. Recycle the melter. Hologram the streamline. There we go. Easy. GG. A mere five minutes second place, but I guess I'll take it. It's a fun deck to play, at the very minimum. Cool to use Streamline like that. GG. Definitely not as fast as Hyper Beaming everything, though, as you can see. GG. GG. Glitches are allowed in these speedruns. Yeah, I, honestly, I figure it's the only way anybody has a chance anyway, right? So yes, by all means. The speedrunning glitch is allowed for submission to the any percent category of Slay the Spire, then you can use it here. Why not? Should probably use the Flex Potion somewhere during that fight. Samir so of Costi won with this deck. Buffer, Hyper Beam, Rebound, Trip Plus. That's definitely a better deck than ours by quite a bit. P-Box Glitch also allowed. We've used it ourselves to victoriously prevail in some of these races. GG. GG. All right. Let's try Silent then. Same conditions.
My lobby should just show up for you in game, Plasma Wolf. You don't need to do anything special. As long as you've got Spire with Friends, make sure you're under the Versus section of the main menu. Can I show the node dupe glitch? Honestly, I've actually never learned how to do it. Never interested me. It's cool, but it's it breaks Spire too hard for my liking. These are the same as everyone else is supposed to see the hyperbeam too. It depends on the path you take through the map. Whether you'll see what cards you'll see. Also, if you're using no duplication, you may see additional card rewards. Which can result in extra findings. Yeah, absolutely. I will give a shout out to Speed Frog. Support Speed Frog. Speed Frog is a cool bean. Pandora's into 8x Alchemize, one can only hope. Alright, best of luck to everybody. May the fastest silent win. Let's see here. Um, oof, Daunting Act 1 with Hexaghost at the end. Okay, I think we'd better get started here, though. Good luck. Fumes over P-Stab? Probably not the correct pick. I had a feeling uh -oh. the first shop was going to be a thing. Right, I'll take the AoE. There is a free elite everyone's going for. The boot! Free the boot! Be the boot! Actually, I will take Skewer. Skewer Plus hits pretty hard. I was originally, pointing, originally planning on going Poison. Seems the cards have another idea in mind. Take the money. Pyramid. Okay, I'll take that too. Easy pick. Uh, do I need a malaise? I don't think so. I just want to kill stuff. I need a shop, don't I? That one will do. That's three elites? I can't do three elites, surely? Oh no, there's the path. Okay, but I looked. A little bit longer there.
It's only gonna be 45 though. That's a slight mistake. Jeez. That was a genuinely very difficult choice for a moment. Uh, we're not very good at this fight. Shoot. Teams are way too far down. Should have taken that poison stab. No, oh, shouldn't be removing strikes either. Dang it. Gonna fall behind like this. Foolish. I'm still waiting on the poison start for this to actually pop off. Right now we're just really slow. This is kind of unacceptable actually. like it. At least we do that on turn one. Um, I need Bear to die first. Jeez. <laughs> That's a good event, but not uh not here and now. It's not not a good. Dang it. It's normally such a good thing. I'll fight, just for my own amusement. Let's use the dupe pot here, huh? Ultimately managed to make a deck that was too slow. Even if it is actually winning the Spire, it's just too slow. what we're doing here. Here we go.
Spooky. Is already done at 10 minutes. GG. What's the deck? Shivs. Just shivs killing everything. Sometimes it works really well, you know? The max health. I'm going to take that same path and assume that there was some merit to it. But yeah, without a corpse explosion, we're actually pretty bad at this whole being a silent thing. No matter, she's going to make this tough too. Mr. Bacon Udo done in 11 minutes. I can maybe do under 15, we'll see, now that the poison is, is kicking in. Really depends on the drawer, though. That helps a lot, even though it's got a slow animation. Bummer. This not so much. Time Eater will be the easiest boss for us, at least. Gotta upgrade that terror so I don't get stuck with it. Oh god. Thank you. Loom with a time of 12 minutes, 18 seconds. Enjoy some poison, sir. Boop. GG. 13 minutes, 36 seconds. Just a sh little bit shy of elite score. It's slower than the others, but I'll bet most of them didn't have a time eater fight that went like that. GG. GG. Looks like everybody else finished with uh, attack builds. Flash of Steel Jax, Phantasmal Killer. Accuracy, Blade Dance, Finisher. It's good stuff. Reliable turn one kills, I bet. GG, everyone. GG.
Will it be 292? Thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Goozy Sub Club. We also got uh, 10 max health on that uh, on that last run, thanks to Tiny House, which gave us 5 max health and then a fruit juice for 5 more. That's pretty funny. Alright, I feel a break coming my way, but let's crank it up a little bit. Who wants to do some higher ascension nonsense? I'm gonna continue to make it now bonus only. No, let's make it uh, let's make it broader lo broader now bonus here. Ascension twenty ironclad, not a heart run, just an ascension twenty ironclad run. Boost to the finish. And that means you have to fight, remember, two bosses at the end of Act 3 and beat both of them in order for it to be considered a win. The Iron Man mode means that if you end up dying, you cannot restart. Seems like most people choose opt to uh, opt not to restart if they die, which is completely valid, I think. Um, but currently, you do have the option to restart and keep playing if you perish. Probably got to reboot Spire shortly. What's with the boot next to peeps? That's the that's the kick button. You boot them from the game. Because Chrono also likes dad jokes. For best results, probably do want to reboot Spire with friends between each match. I know it's kind of hard to keep up with for that reason. I'll be rebooting Spire after this match myself, too, just to clear out any uh, glitches that might be accumulating. Buffnod, thanks for two months and the Prime sub. Keep on cozying on. 20 contestants for the throne of fastest A20 Ironclad. Who will be the actual victor? Expected finish time for an Ascension 20 speedrun, I'd say, on Ironclad, probably under 20 minutes. A little bit longer than the, the regular race. Bingo race when? We'll do some bingo um, probably after this. After the break, we'll switch over to bingo. Although I think I like the standard races more than I like the bingo mode. Maybe we'll do a few, few more races, actually. Bingo mode's a little jarring with with like 20 people in it. It's more of a good uh, three to four player mode. Tizzer King says that I finished Cult of the Lamb. Yes, and I found that the, the final boss was an, an enjoyable experience difficulty-wise. Took us three tries, so not too easy, not too hard. Zonard Stark, thanks for 38 months. I'll be running fast. All right, folks, good luck. Have fun. Please no crashy. May the first and best ironclad win. Uh, that's worth 18. I'll take that. Go this way. So on Ascension 20, you can't just be skipping a leaf. It's worth spending the time here in Act 1 to get more relics, because if you if you don't, um, it's going to be tough. Other option, go glitch heavy. That can be surprisingly effective. Looks like those who swapped their starter relics got a cursed key. Early fairy, huh? Do I take the clothesline? I don't like it, but I will take it. It's not guardian. Okay, I'll remove a defense. Even on A20 here. Can just take the money without taking the curse if you can glitch it correctly. That was the wrong play that turn. A little bit of misoptimization. Dark Embrace? Screw it, I'll do it. This deck's getting weird. Yeah, I figured it might be these nerds. That's what the Dark Embrace is for. 
And what the fairy in a bottle is for, unfortunately. Zero days left in my deck. All right. Pendib get. I'll take a bludgeon with a pendib. Sure, man, the map is hideous. What happened? This bottle's nice. Let's go this way. Kakaw! Through the bludgeon now, good. Back for that bludgeon, actually. Pend it the bludgeon. Bonk? Double fairy in a bottle. Fascinating. Uh, let's take Burning Pack with Dark Embrace. How does this keep happening? Just pot. Feel no pain. Eh, we're not there yet. Dupots are going to be really good for killing Slime Boss quickly, though. Thanks, Fairy in a Bottle. Maybe I'm dead here. That'd be embarrassing. Bottled bludgeon goes with pendant really well. Um, just gonna upgrade dark embrace. This is either gonna go well or it's not. I think I do that, but it might be wrong. It might be really, really wrong. wrong. Yeah, I'm just like super dead. 
Well, I suppose that can happen to the best of us, huh? Yeah, just die. <laughs> All right. That deck was going nowhere fast. Let's give it a retry. We'll do as best as we can with what we're offered this time. Take a different path through the act. Different path means different card awards. How much more difficult is A19 heart to A20, would you say? Like, A19 heart versus A20 heart? Very little difference. The extra boss barely makes an impact. Oh, these cards were all so bad. Such a bummer. Definitely ended up uh, completely throwing this uh, race here. Seems like I threw it by picking the wrong path of the map, plain and simple. Anybody who went this side was doomed. That's not correct. I don't know. I mean, A19 and A20 is just adding an extra boss at the end of the act. Three. If you're able to beat the A19 heart, then you can already do that. If you mean Ascension 18 to Ascension 19, that's a bigger jump. But most of the hard scariness has nothing to do with your Ascension level. Wow, that is a completely different experience than the last run uh, that I was having. What? You gotta be kidding me. Hello? Hey, hey, hey. Absolutely not. As I've said before myself, I allow glitch use for these races. Just gonna delete those messages, Lucky. Because I do not endorse the statement. People who are racing against me may use any tactics at their disposal to go fast and show what's possible within the game engine of Slay the Spire. And I think it's a, a cool thing. A very cool thing indeed. Well, that's, that's the experience we could have had with a slightly different Path Act 1. That's pretty telling. I guess I'll take Exhum for the pummel, but... Let's see how fast we can catch up from here. Ouch. Cube might not be good enough, actually. Oh, I also have Cube Combust, which is uh, not good. Ah, bummer. Draw me a million cards. Or don't, you know.
Mirakoski's done with a time of 12, 10 minutes, 57 seconds, including a crescendo. Managed to get wrath. I'm impressed. Doing so hot myself. Bring me curses. I don't want them. I don't want them. I guess I'll go this way, but I'm kind of scared. As I should be. Oh boy. I think I'm going to die again, actually. That's what's going to happen here. Bummer. Oh, I need to play that bash, actually. We're doomed here. If I can't light up the flexes with the... with the pummel, we're just completely doomed. There's a bit of a hope, but uh, I I think I screwed the pooch here too critically. Go to two. Yeah, we did it wrong. GG, GG. I will gracefully bow out of that one. Could not find a, a working deck for the life of me. GG. GG, everybody. All right, I feel like we need to we need to get the redeem there though. Missed every single curse skip. Oof, Mr. Baconito. Oof. So, I'm going to put up another Ascension 20 lobby, same as before. Try to redeem myself here. I need a quick break before we jump into this race, though. So, I'll give a few minutes for the lobby to fill up. Whereas I am going to take a quick break. But first, I, or I owe Gabobachi a dad joke before I can take a break. Uh-oh. Oh yeah, and don't forget to reset Spire. Actually, yes, yeah, sorry. I'm going to do that now. Kicking everybody out of the lobby, for which I apologize. But yes, let's reset Spire to be less glitchy. That sounds wonderful. First you give it a boot, then you give it a reboot. Gabarbachi, why can't you tell a dad joke without mentioning a dolphin? Because otherwise the joke is without poipus. Mm. 
BRB, folks.
Hey there, hi there, folks. We're back. Thank you for the patience. I see we've got a stacked lobby for some Ascension 20 Ironclad. Let's make sure the Neow bonus is enabled. Good luck. Have fun. Don't die. The boss while busted crown. Let's retry that. With the rare card. Actually, no, with 100 gold. Go this way. I like T-Clap over Cleave early, but, you know, I could be convinced. Double Thunderclap? Let's try it. <laughs> Apparently I was supposed to take Barricade and Trench or something? Hmm. My Red Skull, and a Power Potion. That's a lot of elites. Double Power Potion, and a Carnage, perfect. Carnage Blues. Extreme disappointment. Wakey, wakey. Boot. The most straightforward elite for us should be easy. Ah, uh, bummer. It will not be easy. That is a bummer. All we had to do was draw Carnage with not Bash or with Thunderclap, and we failed to do that. Oh well. Now I have Red Skull and Preserved Insect. This should be easy. I didn't need that feel no pain, huh? Meat on the bone, red skull. The value? Hmm. Can't tell if I want a corruption. I don't think I do. Surely I did the math there, right? Winky face. Probably should have blocked a little bit there. I'm gonna die now, right? I think I'm gonna die. It's like next turn I die. No, we're alive for now. Foolish. Got two turns to kill. 
might actually get there though. Oh! <laughs> uh. Damn it. Uh. Uh, I don't know what I was doing there, but I, I'm out of the lobby now, apparently. That's what I learned. Well, GG's to everybody else. Good luck with the race. It's apparently not my day for the Ironclad. GG. I will guess that I will switch over to bingo. Try something a little different here. So, let's show off bingo. In bingo mode, every player gets a board of goals. We'll keep making it Ascension 1. Every player gets a board of goals. 5x5 five five grits, so 25 total goals. And in the style of a bingo game, the goal is to connect 5. Get 5 contiguous squares filled with completed goals yeah those ascension 20 ironclad runs were uh those were those were painful those were painful so in bingo mode you're allowed to select your starting character you can change characters at any time and you may need to do so in order to achieve some of the bingo goals everybody has the exact same card but players are not playing on the same seed. Can't be, since we're playing with different characters, and you can change characters and start a new run at any time. So you, you essentially play through as many runs of Slay the Spire as is necessary to achieve a full set of goals. Now, on quick difficulty, these can go very, very speedy. Best of luck to everybody. Good luck, Twitch chat. Okay, so what are the goals? You gotta look at the card. Everybody's got the same card. For the same card, beat the heart. Don't play skills. That's easy enough. Green key, blue key, 12 cards in one turn. Oh, that, that's got to be it. Bottom row. First four cards you obtain are attacks. Let's try that. Defeat a boss without taking damage. Good luck. Might need to be the first five cards, or it might need to be... You have to pick another card. Afterwards, deeply unclear. Ah. Gotta take an attack, so I'm taking Clash. That's just how it is, Twitch chat. also an attack. Clash. The Clashification. Okay, that's three attacks. Still need one more.
How do you see the board? If you, uh, might be difficult to, to look at your own or select your own board, but you can mouse over anybody else's name and see the board. Note that everybody's got the exact same board of cards. So looking at anyone else's board is also looking at your board. There's the last attack. Just to make sure it counts. Question is, can I perfect the Guardian? I don't know. I don't know, Twitch chat. I won't be the only one trying. I'm gonna upgrade a Rampage to try to do that. Oh, I still gotta get the red key? Ah, oh, crap. That was my mistake. I was supposed to do that earlier. So I think somebody else will win because of that. Also, this is looking kind of grim here. No! Alright, no perfect boss for me. At least not on this run. So we'll have to sort that out. Bummer. Looks like this was never going to happen. GG, Loom gets there with the perfect boss. Well done. Well done. GG. Why, why did we rest on full health? Because it was a bingo goal, that's why. Because it was a bingo goal. Let's do that again. On a quick difficulty. Ascension 1. Get back in here. Actually, no, let's rank it up to uh, speed 2. There are five difficulty ratings that uh, the mod supports. Uh, the higher difficulties will pull from a different pool of goals with the highest difficulties having obscenely difficult to achieve goals like get a thousand gold or beat the heart with every character. Not so easy to do. Not so easy to do. A C2 generator says, really want to start making mods now? It's not that hard to make a mod for Slay the Spire. If you're willing to learn some Java programming, or if you already know Java programming, you should give it a shot. Show me those check marks. Did I make this? No, this mod was created by Chronometrics. Longtime friend of the channel and who has created quite a few mods for Slay the Spire and many other games. Andy Bendy's fan says, what is Bingo? Bingo is a game mode borrowed from other game communities where you have a, a bingo card, a 5x5 five five grid of in-game goals, and players have 
to race each other to uh, see who can accomplish a set of goals, a, a bingo on their card, uh, as fast as possible. So the, the idea behind the bingo format, especially randomized bingo formats in games, is to challenge players on their ability to accomplish random arbitrary tasks as best they can. Um, so, for example, um, in the Dark Souls community, bingo races were popular for quite a while, where the goal would be, like, every player has to figure out how they can defeat the specific bosses required on the bingo card as quickly as possible. It's about all about kind of challenging yourself to come up with creative solutions, route through the game, and just overall have an expansive knowledge about what you can do. Improv routing, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I love it, you're rocking Hamlet. Chair bash. <laughs> Alrighty. Best of luck to our bingo contestants. May the speediest bingoer win. Let's see, look at our goals here. Buy all three potions, four cards, take no rares till act three. Beat the game. Combat with no attacks. That's pretty easy. Nine energy is hard, though. Kill transient. I think I'm gonna go for top row. That should only require me to beat Act One and Act Two. Okay. Um, and I gotta buy all three potions. So let's do this. Onward. Yeah, I think I'm settled. I'm going um, the four across the top. Have four the same card. Team four attacks, take no rares till act three. That last bit's gonna be tricky. We'll find out. Don't know why I'm fighting elites, actually. We have four of the same card as well. That's going to be trickier to assemble. That just kind of happens or doesn't happen. I don't get a lot of choice in the matter. Take no rares. Definitely not going to take a wild strike. Do I? Okay, that does count when you buy cards too. Perfect. So now all I need to do is rest at full health, take no rares, have four the same. Four the same is going to be a challenge. That's what we got to keep. Keep an eye out for. That might actually be my downfall, is trying to get four of the same card. Good luck to us. Two cleaves. Let's 
I should use one of these. Can't math, apparently. Bummer. How am I beating Hexaghost? Question. Let's use a power potion. Brutality's pretty good, actually. With a blood for blood. Please don't kill me again. That'd be deeply embarrassing if I died. will make it easier to survive what's coming next, I imagine. So, Techno Rares for the same card. Still an obstacle. Fighting Bronze Automaton. How do I beat that? No Rares. Hmm. Problems abound. Self take damage. I mean, armaments is good, but. were made. Four copies of Bash coming right up. I don't think I'm going to make it. Mirror of Kossi has to play 12 cards in one turn. That's not nearly impossible enough. I say, not nearly impossible enough. And I've got no plan for how to get what I need. So I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. Wait. Does that count? Doesn't seem to. But why not? GG. Mirror of Costi takes it. Another victor. It might be that I, I'm i actually not actually sure that it doesn't count. Uh, I'm just... It, it might have counted, but not actually updated until we change something about the deck. So I don't, I don't know if that counts or not counts properly. I would have to experiment more. Bingo was his name-o. All right, let's do another uh, easy one. Level one, Ascension. 
Yeah, I think I would have had to, to either add a card or remove a card to the deck from that point for it to uh, count. Yeah, we can make the squares much harder until everyone is suffering and no one is enjoying themselves. But that's not quite necessary. And Faley's here, joining us for some bingo. Good to see you, Faley. Ready up, everyone, and good luck. Have fun. All right, what are the goals this time? Red key, beat act three. It's not going to work. Take no rares. Green key, beat act three. Feet transient. Hmm. This is almost impossible to do without getting to at least Act 3, huh? Oh, wait, no, the upward diagonal. That's the way. Or the same card, get the green key. Alright, that's the goal. Potions lets me do that really quick. Um, I just want money though. That'll do. Okay, let's go. Some of them are already rich. Not sure how they did that, but I'm impressed. Good. Two angers. even play it. That's sad. Whoops. Green key, 300 gold for the same card. Wow, 
Uh, Mr. Bacon Noodle is already way ahead of us here. Don't have the speed I needed. It's been needed. But how fast can they get four of the same card? That's the question. Stone gives me speed, but is that actually useful? I guess so. Wait, Hexaghost? Hmm. Might be dead momentarily. Be fun. Probably need this to survive Hexaghost. Oh, and I was supposed to use those on the same turn, right? Yeah. That's fine. Probably better off restarting, although I don't know how we would get four of the same card. Hmm, questions, questions. Get the green key. Crown? It's gonna be really hard to get four of the same card with Crown. Okay, now we have two Twin Strikes, so we can go on Twin Strikes or Angers. Keep looking, keep looking. Cleaves. That's for the same card, isn't it? Isn't it? Need to get the green key. So I imagine as soon as I make a modification, yeah, now it sh sh says have four of the same card. Uh, that's what I thought. Okay, so green key's up there. We're close. Question is, will we will we be able to beat our foes to the goal here? I'm not sure. Master. Kunai Shuriken's pretty funny. Oh, 
dear. So close. I can feel it. I can feel it on my tongue. <laughs> we were maybe two floors away. I'd estimate 30 seconds from victory there. All I had to do was beat the elite by drinking all three potions in one turn. Shouldn't have been too difficult. GG. Very well played. Very close game. GG. Managed to kill the transient, apparently. Well earned. Well earned. So close. Lost with three clashes, as you rightly should have. All right. No more Mr. Nice Baylor. I'm going to start as Watcher this time. And we're going to do medium difficulty. Actually, are we? Now nah, we're going to do easy difficulty again. Easy's been a nice balance, actually. Nice little 10 minute matches. So you are allowed to play this in uh, team mode where players compete or work together to gain, uh, to accomplish goals. Pretty hard to do that with no uh, voice chat though. So I think it gets a little bit hectic. Cyrus TD, thanks for 27 months on their way. All right. I'll give you a moment. Oh, yeah. So, so you're asking about the, uh, the difficulty specifically, which lists players per team. That's the suggested number of players for, uh, for the team. If you're going to play on that difficulty. The higher difficulties are really uh, rather absurd in what they ask you to do. So if anybody, everybody's trying to get them get those goals themselves, it's uh, pretty tough. All right, everybody. As soon as we're all ready, we'll start here. Best of luck. Have fun. Let's go. Greetings, Jews. What are the goals here? Skip a boss relic. Win a combat without playing skills. Remove a rare. Interesting. That's not too bad. Hexaghost. Play 10 shivs. Win the game. Not happening. 1200 gold. Not happening. Okay, I'll just do... Yeah, I'll just do top here. Take no rares until Act 2. I wonder if you can take a rare and remove it. Okay. Defeating a boss without taking damage is going to be tough, though. Nor is it. Oof. 
need that if I want to perfect the boss. So make my goal easier for Hexaghost, especially. Uh, this would be easier if I lose some health, too. Let's go down to, like, 23. Yeah, without taking damage. Not on turn one. Just without taking damage. this. Kaida's almost already done. Just needs to remove a rare card. Oof. I gotta pick up the pace here. I just need to skip a boss relic. Oh, shoot. That's what I was supposed to do there. Well, son of a gun. <laughs> uh, I missed my chance there as well. All right. Fair enough. Let's just try to kill Champ real quick then. But yeah, I goofed. Definitely goofed. My chances, no! But how can you remove that which you do not have? GG. Mm -hmm. GG. All right, well, probably remembering all my goals is uh, is a good idea. That's right, you are allowed to restart and change characters. I've been trying to do these all in one run for the most part. I know that's not the fastest way to do it, though. And those who are taking advantage of better tactics are winning each time. That's why I'm not winning. Why is my mouse cursor gone? Hold on, I'm going to restart Spire. I can figure out how. We'll do maybe one more bingo game. Myrtle Wind. You just hit escape there, you'll get it back. Gotcha. What do you mean the streamer's not winning? I 
explain how. Also, how's it going, Chrono, the creator? Father of this mod. Father. All right, bingo. Once more, we'll try on medium this time. Still Ascension 1, though. Good luck. Hey. I said medium and I meant it. Turns out speedrunners are good at playing the game fast. Who knew? Yeah, it turns out having a very large community full of incredibly skilled players means there's people able to kick your butt every which way. You stay there. Something to do with players leaving and joining. Not sure. But do they have buttery voices? That is the question. Embark. Alright, here's the set of goals. Beat the game under 30 with a 5 card deck or smaller while beating the heart with 25 or more relics. That's all you have to do to get the top row. Play 25 cards in one turn and kill the transient. That's, that's doable. Perfect clear the heart. Wow, these are definitely higher, uh, higher tier goals. Have only colorless or starter cards after any boss. Alright, I think I'm going to do this as an ironclad heart run, actually. Just the change character button. Is it win a combat without playing any attacks? That I saw? Without playing attacks. Okay. I'm going to come back with one health left. All right. Let's let's uh, let's start this way and just see how this goes. Double merchant? Double, uh, no, that's the regular merchant. Welcome, regular merchant. I'm here to remove all of my strikes and defends. Dang it. Good luck to us. That'll help. Thanks, Colorless Potion. You're a true friend. I should have taken the warp tongs though. Is this medium? Yes. This is medium spice. Rampage is good in this fight. Not amazing, but good enough. How's it going, Scott Clo? We, we are racing in a bingo mode using a multiplayer mod called Spire with Friends. Goal is to compete against one another to see who can complete sets of goals within the game as quickly as possible. 
We're doing that on Ascension 1 because we're racing against each other, not so much fighting against the game. Exclamation point multiplayer has a link to the mod for you. If you'd like to try it yourself. Yeah, medium was a big step up in difficulty, it seems like. Immolate. Yeah, let's grab that. Headbutt's also pretty good. Designed with teams in mind. mean that's necessarily what you get. Sneko Eye. Well, it's not going to be Fusion Hammer. Ball Strikes Defends. Winning in combat with one health left is not a problem. Winning in combat without playing attacks is not a problem. We can do both of those at the same time later. Shop here. Double Searing Blow. That is a lot of damage. Got that for the heart fight. Dark Embrace is tempting there. Let's skip that elite. Dual wields crazy good with Sneko Eye, but uh, I'm not going to take the unupgraded version here. Of course. Greetings, Synopsis Guy. Hello. 
and welcome. So you want me to do how much damage? It's a lot of damage. That is a lot of damage. Very good here. I'm gonna need the help. I'm gonna need the help. Cycled without uh, stirring blow there. That was a misplay. Not the world's biggest one, though. Magic flower is very nice. Let's take a true grit. Gonna need a little bit of block. As aforementioned. Um, uppercut, double tap, stirring blow. Is good. Not planning on using the Guria though. sure we don't die at the end here. Oh. I wish I could afford ice cream. That would help a lot. Keep saving energy money. Upgrade a card. Yes. Upgrade it more. But there's only one boss to deal with. Viewers view the bingo card. Unfortunately, no way to really do so at will uh, if you're not in the game yourself. Gotta get in the game if you want to see the bingo card. Feeling transient wasn't on the menu.
definitely not who I was clicking on, but okay. How's it going, Ubla? What's up? The Oobs has arrived. I got so many goals. I beat Act 3, beat Act 3 as Ironclad, and beat the game in under 30 minutes there. So that was three separate goals we just accomplished. Need to win a fight on one health now. That's a future Baylor problem. Smoke bomb for the elites was a funny idea there. to me. Get rid of the anger. Great turn one. Actually didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Should play the drop kick there? Maybe. Bottle, this is no problem. Plus magic flower. The power. Alright, there's a 15 minute heart kill. Do I have to watch this? <laughs> Wait, no, just go. GG, folks. GG. That's a Baylor victory. GG. All you had to do was beat the heart with Ironclad in 15 minutes. No problem. Looks like Mirror of Costi was on their way to win as Watcher. I think that probably wasn't too far away. But, uh, yeah, GG. GG. That was great. A little defect that could. A little defect that could. GG's.
All right, I think I want to kick it back to some more traditional style races. I know Ubla's here to really show us how it's done, too. Uh, I'm also going to take another quick break here before we jump into any more runs. So I'm going to open up a lobby for Silent Ascension 1 Speedrun. And Ubla is here to show us how it's done. Sure, Mirov Kosti will be competing as well. But while y'all gather into the lobby, bear in mind this is in the versus mode, not the bingo mode. While you are while you are all gathering, I'm going to take a quick break, refill the legs, switch the water. When I return, more speedy spire. Don't go anywhere, folks.
Your long wait is in an end, everyone. We are here. We are ready. And it is speedy silent time. Wait, says Willoughby. You have my attention. Room for one more. We got it. Let's go. Good luck. Have fun. May the speediest silence prevail. Alright, I think I gotta go shivs this time. Uh, Dagger throws too slow because I have to select a card. I don't like that very much. Alright, either it's gonna work or it's not gonna work. We're gonna find out which very soon here. Tending towards it's gonna work. I don't know if that's actually correct in a speed run of any variety, but here we are. Let's take an Alchemize. Interesting. Should have taken the Bouncing Flask after all. Or the uh, Dagger Throw after all, rather. Uh-oh. Tools here. All right, just kill one of them. Stuck in a bit of a long fight here, unfortunately. Be back, Catalyst. I promise. Okay, I'm through. That was a slow experience, but might have been worth it. You should have taken the acrobatics there, maybe. Definitely, maybe. Is it the same seed? Yes, everyone's playing on the same seed, so everyone will have the same if they take the same path, the same card rewards, the same enemies. But if they take different paths, all bets are off, and just about anything can happen. Ubla on floor 25, the mad person. Keep taking more poison cards, do it. Or die. Um, actually, I don't even think I want to do pot that. a lizard tail, so it's going to be pretty hard to die overall, but not impossible. Watch me.
Tool of the Trade is going to be too much clicking. I'll take Wraith Form, though, so that we can survive. And that should justify a Coffee Dripper here. Good with Dupe Pot, too. I love the path that we can take here. Uh-oh. Don't love the birds, though. Birds could definitely cause problems for us. Maybe want to take a piercing whale, but I don't think I do. I'm gonna risk this or this. Do, buddy. Um, two elites, one elite. This has got to be the better way, surely. Crane. Hmm. Stamp loose? I don't think so. Well, actually, Paper Crane seems pretty good. George Costanza in fourth? He always is. Grand finale happening? Yeah. That would explain how Oogle is so far ahead. I should have just do part of that, maybe? Probably. My life is too difficult. 
think this is the wrong number. Yeah. Seems like a good Sneko eye to me. Alright, there are the other racers. What's the fastest way through? I see it. Here. Trying to go fast. So we're not we're not going to the heart on this one, just the end of the act. So first person to beat time meter is the victor here. That's why you look at the card rewards. Open a good speed potion, maybe. on killing them. Thank you. Doesn't matter. Too many floors, Ubla. Too many? I give up my lizard tail willingly, knowing that I will not need it. end boss here. But I can beat Time Eater very quickly is the thing. Uh, yeah, very quickly. GG. What? <laughs> GG. A 
GG. The power. Can't do much better than a photo finish like that. I'll take it. So Ubley had uh, Corpse Explosion Grand Finale Catalyst. That's pretty spicy. With the Pandora's box to get rid of everything. We were stuck with uh, some starter cards. And I didn't mind it. GG. GG. Basically a tie. I like it. Amazing. Well, I feel like we need a rematch then. Same conditions. Who will prevail? These are the questions of our time. Hey, glad you're uh, glad you're enjoying these, Caleb is Boomer. Content like this is a ton of fun to create, so it's it's a really nice swap from the usual. Why were the floor numbers different though? That's because Ubla is utilizing a glitch called Node Duplication, which allows them to essentially visit additional floors. It means you got to do more clicking, um, but you can get much much stronger by getting additional re rewards, such as additional boss relics. Everyone soon the, who is in the final screen when the first one finishes can finish, and if they do, they tie. Interesting. Very interesting. We'll wait for you, S team. Var, thanks for 32 months of support. Randy B got time meter down to 13 on the split turn. Oof. So close and yet so far. Always feels bad if you're looking for the 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 one phase fight, but you don't quite get it. That was us against Hexaghost earlier. We died with Hexaghost at one. <laughs> oops. Big oops. Alrighty, everybody. Here's Randy. And Honey Nut Gyrios. I like it. All right, best of luck to everybody. May the fastest silent be victorious. Let's go. I don't know if that's the right way to go, but I'm already committed. Is Dash good? Let's find out. Probably not. Transform and defend. Interesting. Also interesting. Okay, it looks like everybody clued into that path as well. Do I take a sneaky strike? I'm not convinced. Act boss, slime boss. Okay, not too bad. And then Juzu bracelet. Oh my.
I'm not going to be able to play these fast enough, though. I don't have my clicky fingers on today. Dead branch? That seems absurd. Let's not do that. How do you know which boss is coming up? You could always look at the top of the map and see an icon representing the boss that is at your act. Mastering the art of preparing yourself for your upcoming boss is one of the most important skills in Slay the Spire. So learn well the icons here, the, the splat for slime boss, so that you can be prepared. I meant to use this. Still well. Form where we're going. I will take the dripper though. Yeah, that path up the middle is the right way to go, but can we do enough damage? Oops. Hopefully, I didn't need the damage from that strike. should be taking some of this. There we go. Not a loop. Probably shouldn't have read this. Like, uh, I've got dash, actually. I'll take it. If only I could feed them the Necronomicon. Um, give up the after image, actually. I know what you're thinking. Why would you do that? And you're right. Why would I do that? Let's play Mario Kart. What an act that is, huh? This is a non-heart run, that's right. That's right. It's not gonna bother before there's uh, energy accuracy. <clears throat> Want to run experiment? I'm not really sure that I do. Let's see what the other options are. Definitely want a phantasmal killer. Okay. Phantasmal killer, sure, I'll take a pyramid. Alright, we just gotta get to and defeat the time eater as quickly as possible. I'm willing to bet none of my other op opponents have a Necronomicon, so I'm gonna assume that there's at least a slight advantage in my favor here. Who knows what they could have? <laughs> Did 
data not found. If I want any chance of winning this, I can't possibly take a fight right now. Probably didn't want to take that. Wow, they're so fast. Wow, Mirab Costi and Ubla are both done. Oh, both of them had grand finale. Come on. Come everybody got to get grand finale. Baylor never gets the grand finale. What gives? What gives? <laughs> GG. That was a really fast run, though. Sub 10 for all of us. GG. GG. More like Grand Win Nally. GG. GG. Ah, uh, the old accidentally discarding a smoke bomb. Classic. Classic. Anytime the, the top two are within a minute of each other, it's a, a really good run. So GG's all around. GG's. Isn't that what you're supposed to do with Smoke Bomb? In normal gameplay, yes, but if you're trying to go as fast as possible, it's quicker to skip the combat with a Smoke Bomb than it is to, uh, to fight it, usually. Do I want to subject us to the Ironclad Experience A20? Again, that is my first question. I kind of feel the need to redeem Ironclad A20. And Ubla's here now to show us how it's done. So let's do it. Let's do Ironclad Ascension 20. Once again, we'll be giving us a starting bonus because everyone's going to need one. Uh, but not lament only. So you may make your own choice. First one to get to and defeat the double act three bosses is the winner. You are allowed retries, so even if you die early on, which is understandable, it is Ascension 20, don't feel too bad if it happens to you. Then you get to start anew with a bonus. Now try not to die to one health by to Hexaghost again. That's the goal. 820 is always fun, though. You have to, you have, to have a sum balance between block and offense, or you're just going to die. You're just gonna die. No heart. Now let's 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 not put everybody through that. Quite yet. Just clarifying, not asking for it. That's right. Yeah. No heart. No, I'm not trying to punish all of us. May the best clad win. Let's go. That's got to be the right pick. 
Let's go this way. Yeah, let's go this way. Everyone seems to be on the same train there. Enjoy your terrible Snacker rolls. <laughs> I'll do it. I'll take the big card. The card that says big on it. I think everybody gets the same Sneko rolls, but I'm not actually 100% sure about that. Do I need to feel no pain in this deck? Probably. Ah, sometimes the Sneko just gives you exactly what you need. Take a close line, too. Um, Heavy Blade Plus is actually worthless? That's funny. For later. Uh oh. Hmm. You've chosen a suspiciously bad time to betray me, Sneko. This for Hexaghost? I hate adding that to the deck. Please give me a demon form, Hexaghost. Need strength so bad. That's kind of like strength. Double tap, not good enough. Pyramid Sneko Eye. Uh, how about a Runic Dome? With meat on the bone, I don't think I care that much, right? Backwards Sock, thanks for the Prime sub. Welcome to the QZ Sub Club. That's a lot of elites, huh? Although, not if I go that way. Let's go this way. <laughs> Looks like I'm the first person to make it to Act 2. That's a good feeling. Kind of. M maybe. At long last, strength. Huh. 
Whirlwind right before the birds? What a fortuitous timing. Nice try, nerds. Now get blurred. Maybe I should have bought that fiend fire, hey? turn for our block potion or was it well now it is right yeah Spooky in here. Can I even beat that elite? Not unless I roll well. Terrifying. Quite the travesty. Not quite. A shrug. I need some block, right? Definitely afraid of collector later on. them again. They're rude. You guys are rude. The second heavy blade. Um, I'd rather not fight an elite. It's going to use this flex potion to get out of the act. That I mean using it with a limit break here. Let's try, nerd. Corruption. That's gonna be it. Wait, demon form. Wait, demon form, though. 
Five energy, or let's transform some stuff. Hmm. Should have taken the five energy. All right, just got to get to and defeat Time Eater and the boss after Time Eater. Don't forget, there is another boss. So, must be very careful with how we go about this. So, we can't just YOLO our way through one boss fight and hope that's enough. Grab a second shockwave, actually, for backup purposes. Abacus could be pretty good here. Abacus could definitely be good here. Boat thingy is going to be good here. Take both of those. Boat of those. This could be Padden. Good. Thank you for not being bad. Yet. Um, although things might be bad now. Ha! Easy. Easy, easy. Can the curse be the first attack? No. That's basically the one and only rule. Meat value get. Seems pretty fast. Uh, heal the full, actually. I'll use my snicker oil here. That was a good snicker oil. Dead branch, who needs it? Take like a power potion. Last kerfuffle, thanks for 26 months of support. I gotta upgrade that other heavy blade too. Sorry, Bash. Heck no to those two. Ah, uh, no, upgrade the heavy blade. All right. 14 minutes into our first boss, which will be Time Eater. Zero cost demon form turn one is pretty encouraging. That's debuffed, though. That's going to hurt. Oof, that's going to hurt. Um, hmm. Let me do that. Go in flame. Shockwave. I'm going to second win these two. Not too much. Hey there, Abacus. Glad you're here. 
to help out. All right, now we go for the kill. Bonk. One down. This is terrifying. It's gonna be good though. Okay, we just go like full aggro here, huh? That's how it's gotta be. It's got the birds with whirlwind. I'm just gonna go flex limit break because we need to be strong right now. Shoot. Think mistakes have been made. Yeah, we're dead. We're dead on board here. Just barely. Didn't quite make it, though. Bummer. GG. I will gracefully accept my defeat at the head of the pack here. Had we been able to uh, successfully beat the boss, that would have been a win. Instead, victory goes to Miro of Kosti with 16 minutes, 45 seconds, a perfected strike, 19 strikes somehow. What? Now, that's a glitch I've never heard of. 19 strikes and five Ascenders Banes. How? How did you do that? <laughs> it's pretty wild. How and why? And who? And whomst? Maybe a display glitch, visual only. Okay, that's that sounds like something that is more correct. That sounds like something that's more correct. We haven't done any Watcher today. Let's do some Watcher. Some Ascension 20 Watcher. Extremely perfected. The last run should be an A20 heart race. I think I agree. I think I agree. We'll do we'll do this and then we're going to make a finale with the hardest possible race. See if anybody can manage. I think that's a great idea. All right, not many entrants for this one. I get it. Give people a couple more minutes to show up. Hold. Hold. I will hold. Please hold. For chronometrics. Herbie, thank you so much for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. A20's hard, you're telling me. I just got bonked. By that stinky awakened one. At least that was a good, a really good run, because it was very close. Once, and I think I even just misclicked in the Awakened One fight to lose. Once had a good idea, and that day was today. There's Chrono. There 
There they all are. All right, let the spootering, the speedering, the spootering begin. Good luck, everyone. May the fastest watcher win. Hmm. This is watcher A20. I'm going to do a 250 gold start and go this way, actually. It's probably not what the others are doing. This is a hunch. The others are going pressure points build, obviously. <laughs> now I'm strong. Hello. This way. Easy. Not sure how I feel about that. Um, what are we trying to do here? Omni eruption? Guess so. That feels right. Do bomb me here. Stick with like a tantrum.
Yeah, it's just like Ben Pandora's box. It's pretty funny, huh? Just gotta live with a kid. Oops. They're starting to go fast, but I'm no longer sure what for. Or how, more accurately. Just lose all the cards, apparently. cards I want, but definitely need some more cards. <laughs> Do I actually? Maybe I don't. Every card of the deck is now upgraded. Okay, okay. Casual, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, double to reach heaven? Sure. Actually, maybe it's supposed to be Violet Lotus. I'm not sure. Heels Yo too, thanks for the four months, and you're welcome for the nice vibes. Do that at least. Shoot. Should not have picked up that curse though. Forgot about the curse key. Foolish. Maybe I wanted a tantrum? Maybe. Uh oh. That's fine. Fair enough. What can you do? Not 
might cost me in the end here. Alright, two bosses to beat, too. Hmm. Just to get rid of the curse, actually. Let's just do that. Mirror is done. To which I'm not too surprised. Gotta be like totally different. Nor fight here. We're just gonna die anyway. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Need to collect some of these. All right, GG. GG. Well done, Demir of Kosti. Our winner. Getting late for you and you're hungry. Yeah, we're going to be winding down uh, soon ourselves here. I think I'm just going to do one final race. One final long haul of a race. Defect. Ascension 20. Heart run. This will be the final challenge of the night. The final race. To see who can get to the top. Give folks a few minutes to, uh, to filter in here. Not for the faint of heart, although all are welcome, of course. Question will be who can get the robot to the very end. Of course, we're all playing on the same seed, so you have to be able to make do with what you're given here. It's going to be pretty tough. First speed run ever, Equinox. GG's, thanks for playing. Even if you didn't get all the way to the end or even close to the end, I hope you had fun trying to go fast and seeing how fast others can go. Mirovkosti, world record holder for A20 defect glitchless. In case anyone was wondering, <laughs> the um, credentials of our repeat winner today. Maybe with infinite resets, maybe. But playing on the same seed over and over again, oof. P-Box Swap Lottery. Yeah, that sounds about right. Because you're looking for the perfect uh, perfect Floor 1 deck right from the get-go, essentially. That's funny. That does sound like misery. Waffle House fan says I got my first A20 heart kill the other day slowly, so I'm good at that for now. Understandable. Well, anyone else 
looking to join. I think people are still finishing up the last race, so I'll, I'll wait a little bit. Actually, while we're waiting for new people to, to filter in, why don't we share some positive vibes? Twitch chat, is there any good news that you've had recently? An exciting moment that you want to share? Something wonderful that happened to you or somebody that you know? If so, please type it up in chat. Spread some love around and share the good vibes. Matty G is going to be a first time uncle this week. Good luck to you and, of course, to the happy couple. Dimodius, grats on the master's degree. Congratulations. Storm says my shoulder surgery went well, and now I just have to do PT for six weeks. Don't uh, don't neglect that after surgery care. It is huge. It might. I know it's tough to stay motivated sometimes, but here's here's to a successful PT routine and speedy recovery for you. Glint is currently eating a pear. I hope it's nice and juicy. One of my favorite fruits. E.T. Pone Home. Finally got approval to move back after two years of working out of state. Good stuff. Hubla says, my new job in software dev is going very well. The pay certainly beats academia. Yeah, I bet. Atlas WW reconnected with a friend you've known for 18 years, but haven't talked in ages and ages. They're helping you get a novel started. Cool. This is E's boyfriend and them are getting engagement ring soon. Hope they're beautiful. I am Jafuli is just one 820 away from the eternal one trophy. Last one's a doozy. Good luck. Said he says, I got unstuck from Ascension 7 to 8 on all characters. Subscribe to your YouTube now, A14 on all characters. Hey, welcome. Certainly in time for some interesting action. We're about to do a, what is a multiplayer race between myself and many other skilled members of the community here to see who can beat an Ascension 20 defect run heart as quickly as possible. Mr. Hacky Sack added two inches to my sit and reach this month. That's beautiful. It's my own personal good news. Somebody who I'd been hoping to hear from reached out to me recently. Um, and I'm really excited to, to talk. It's been a little while. I've also got hopefully exciting news for our stream content in October that I don't think I can share quite yet. But there's been a much requested game that we're likely to see in the near future via a sponsored opportunity. No DC. I'm not familiar with that one, Polymer. Rick Gold says, I'm taking my six-year-old to Hawaii for a month and working remotely. Hope that goes well. Landis says, speaking of surgeries, my arm and slash shoulder one from the 14th of July went well as well. And PT is almost over. Went to and from work on my motorcycle for the first time in three months. Well, that's definitely some, some functionality there. That's good. Lent says, do I know if Incredine is affected by your current card reward rare chances? No, it shouldn't be. It should just be an equal one out of however many powers there are. So kind of ignoring rarity. That's true. I also did recently claim the A20 heart record. That was a pretty exciting thing. And got, oh, you know, just like a thousand subscribers at the same time. That happened. That was pretty cool. And then to thank all of those people that subscribed, we did a community day where we raced each other in this. Oh, wait, that's still happening. That's literally what's happening right now. Well, yeah. So, yes, another big thank you to all the ridiculous, ridiculous support for the channel over the last month. Never have I ever seen this channel succeed so well. 
Jellybean695 says, What do you do with expertise? It's a, an interesting, flexible card draw card. Ideally, if you can get it to be the last card in your hand, it'll draw six or seven cards. But if having energy after that can be tricky. Uh, I like it in conjunction with the card Prepared, Calculated Gamble, and a few others. Alrighty, everybody. We've got 12 brave souls ready to face the torments of Ascension 20 Heart Defect. Best of luck to everyone. Hopefully somebody can survive. Good luck. Good luck. Alright, that's my chosen start. I like that start. Putting Guardian. Can't do three elites, huh? Alright, we'll do it this way then. Pothiosis is particularly good for the defect. Those swapping got a black star, by the way. Pothiosis is particularly good for defect because it's a two cost card, but you instantly get energy back from the zap and the dual cast. Am I taking a stack? Yeah, I am. Let's do it. Probably should have just taken Barrage. But you know how I get. Could have played a different character. You know, I don't blame you. Don't blame you at all. Can't afford hologram, huh? That's fine. Go this way then. I'll try Tempest? No, I'm gonna go Storm. Let's do it. I believe. Storm is almost useless right now, but only almost. Actually. Double storm, the restorming. Oops, that was bad. Turbo? Elite now. It's a lot of combats. I don't feel like I can. Oh, he's got an electrodynamics in a storm. I'm impressed, Dubla. Kind of terrified, actually. Wish I had an electrodynamics in a storm, you know? This is why we hold on to the fruit juice. Not going how 
I want it to. Star. I'm going to take Black Star going into the next act. Take a charge battery. Warp tongues. That's not going to help. It's a recall now. Since I've got apotheosis and all that, I'm gonna get bonked by the guardian. Easy. Just what I wanted. Death. The blockader. Vision core surge meteor strike. Try taking Fission here. Fission Black Star. This run's gonna get weird. Oh boy. That looks safer. has done so many node dupes. Floor count is absurd. But will it be enough? That is the question. That no one can answer currently. Hmm. Storm. We'll take the defrag. I'm not exactly happy with it, but here we are. have to do. Be a good fight for the next potion, maybe. Need to like survive. Bob 
Bummer. Surviving did not happen. Such a bummer. And they gotta be like that. Pothios's Seek were my bottom two cards. Like, ouch. Okay, we did live, though. That's the important part. Got a bottled Seek Plus. Okay, everything's fine. Uh, literally nothing else matters now. We always Seek Apotheosis turn one. Life is good. Take that, take this. Life is really good. Sure is a lot of dazed in the draw pile. If I haven't made a fatal mistake. No, we're good. Romeo, no! Didn't quite work how I wanted it to. pretty funny um we could just there's literally nothing that the upgrade matters on because we can always seek apotheosis but whatever there's thunder strikes happening dear lord can no one stop this person wait my storm Is the last card, uh, last power, not exactly ideal. Take what you can get. This is a nice draw for. Dang it. I really want to dual cast it, so we're doing that.
short one short very bad it's very bad all right debuffs are gone please I have to live collector has less health than the torch heads but I can't <laughs> oh I can't Looks like we have to drop out here. I really thought we were going to have it, but unable to evoke an orb with his draw order means we're super dead. GG. I'd like to have more stuff, but uh, we'll keep going until somebody finishes, at least. that I got different cards that time. Dang collector. I don't know why I went the same path, though. Where the heck did that electrodynamics come from? That's what I want to know. Double storm. There's the electro. Okay. This looks better now. I am the storm. this time. I am the storm. I got them's not gonna get played. I'm gonna need to take it. Let's try it. Vision's even better now. Does need an upgrade still. 
Rilo Stone could really backfire later. Still liking the uh, Black Star, actually. Knowing Gremlin Leader is up first, took a similar path to last time also. Really pleased we managed to level up the algorithm so many consistently times. I still take this under plus as well. It just seems like a good, good idea. That sure is a lot of astrolabes, Ubla. Like what? I feel like I got stamped last time. I'm pretty happy with this. Deep Rag here. I remember this Deep Rag Insect, except it was at that shop. I'm gonna buy the same things. Surely making the same deck twice will work out great. I love doing that. Oh, I should have. that thunder would come in handy. Okay, get fission upgraded before it is too late. These nerds. Still doing this power spam thing, like I think it's gonna work. I have no idea. That's the real answer. I have not got a dang clue. Shoot. Wow, that was a lot of killing. Stubborn Gremlin. Oh god, they're so angry. There's so many of them. It's horrifying. Get rid of them, please. Be gone. This is my favorite kind of deck, and I don't really care if it works. Storm, and Turbo, and then Vision, then Loop, Storm, Electro, Zap. Thing is that now I can't do a whole lot more. We've spent ourselves. Not much remains. But it's clear that it's strong enough, at least for now. The question is, how do we get it to... How do we get it to beat the Awakened One? And the answer, I believe, is that Thunderstrike. Genuinely, unironically, that Thunderstrike. 
How do I block the heart, though? Hmm. Four energy base per turn sure would be nice. Uh, I don't think I can. Let's get energy generation from cards instead. Equilibrium is nice. Okay, we still have a black star. Let's go three elites. Blocking is for chumps, exactly. Gone awry, it seems. Self repair plus over another heat sinks, I guess. Deck really needs a mummy hand before it's actually good, though, you know? Button. Technically, Panache is a power. I love it. Go Panic Button. Algorithm. Shoot. There it is. Sweet. I agree. The deck needs more energy generation, one way or another. Softlocked GG Ubla. Thanks for playing. We're fighting the Awake. No, we're fighting to a new deck. Okay, we might not even be fighting Awaken One, so let's just pretend we're not. Everything will be fine. He should have equilibrium at some point in there. There we go. This detail's pretty good. I will take, yes, you heard it, another storm. I love this deck. Dear. That's not too bad, actually.
There's another turbo. This deck is amazing. Currently how I'm feeling about it. Uh, we need some better upgrades. These turbos actually need to be plus. I want to upgrade the defragments, but I don't think I'm allowed to. Great panic button. Another skin. Fusion's also technically an energy generating card. I'm going to take it. We're a little bit married to our heat sinks, though. It was a bit of a problem. Maybe that's not that big of a problem, actually. Card draw. All right, first pair of bosses, Donu and Deka. Thankfully, no downside for playing powers in this fight. It's also a multi-enemy combat, so that's good too. Storms. You'll love to see it. Of course, we do take a little bit of damage here. Not too much, just a bit. Still got a lizard tail, too. Blap! Good job, Thunderstrike. You're entertaining as hell. All right, it is the Awakened One. Prepare your butts, Twitch chat. I don't know what to do here. Uh, I think we use po potions to start. Hmm. I'll play this. And this. Don't play the self repair yet. Shoot. That's gonna have to work. Dear. Kill him. Finish him. Seven times forty two. That is a big number.
GG. All right, the Awakened One's dead. The Awakened One is dead, and we even got two potions left. Glorious work. All right, get the other energy upgrade on this turbo. The Awakened One was never a threat. Frozen Eye, terrifying. Force Field is like super free block. And Tropic Brew is amazing. Bag of Prep seems good. Just go Bag of Prep. And... Do I take a Capacitor? No, let's just take another potion. Even if it's not a particularly good potion, I'll take a potion here. So go Storm, Storm... Do I Equilibrium or just more Storms? Let's just go more Storms. This is almost good enough. What do you got, Skill Potion? Slightly better. The blip blaps have occurred. Chronos are the first to officially finish with a time of 35 minutes, 48 seconds. GG's and congratulations to Chrono here. We're coming up not behind with a hilarious deck of cards. What am I duping in this deck? Honestly, Storm Dupe is pretty tempting. Let's skim first. Perfect. Let's dupe Storm Dupe Defrag. Shouldn't have played that. Damage here. Yeah. The Blapiter. Mr. Hart. GG, what a fun run. Love the storm decks. You gotta love them. GG. GG. Secret of Tangent, thanks for the five gifted subs. Welcome to the QZ Sub Club, everybody. Storming into second place. I'll take it. I will take it. GG. GG. Not too bad. Not too bad. Trogix asks, is, the is this a recurring event on the channel? Yes, indeed. Every time the sub bar below my face fills up, we throw a day like one of these. Alas, that is going to have to bring me to the end of tonight's show. But it's been an absolute joy. Looking forward to some more uh, heart kills tomorrow. Maybe a little bit of it into the breach as well. GG, Chopper Dave, Doom Drake, Chunt, Equinox, Bridgeburner NZ, Stormful, 
Holy Chocolate, Fluffy Mittens, Leofa, Walena, and everybody else. It's been a total, total joy. And I hope to see many of you soon. Till then, toodaloo, folks. Have a good'un. So long. Farewell. And ta-ta. Till then, have a good one and good night.